think we've made some rolls. Um, oh, I told you what my downtime was going to be for the day that we had off, but I don't think we ever did rolls for it. Because we had the dick. Because you what was it. You devoted some of it to a lot of the talking and then. No, oh, yeah, I was going to do the rest of it into. I was going to work on a virus. All right. Like I wasn't. That's why I wasn't really worried about it because it's it's just rolls at that point. Okay. Let's. When you got an opportunity, make some rolls. Well, I got an opportunity right fucking now, now, don't I? I would hope so. All right. So, have you make some rolls? Let's see. I was at five and nine for this thing. How many time times do I have after? You know. Um. Since you get pretty much half a day, pretty much, say about 12. 12? Okay. I'm just going to roll a batch of 12 rather than individual then. Okay. Cause... Just tell me which ones aren't, uh, which ones are passes and which ones aren't. Uh, yep. Single digits will count as two progress for your... Uh, Okay. Uh, your program. Uh, ones will actually, they'll count as a single progress, but they'll also gain uh, opportunity for an upgrade. I'm going to roll the first one straight, just so we can see what the number we're aiming for is. 75. Okay, and then I'll just roll the other 11. Good number. Let's see. No Only single digits. Two fails. Yeah, but honestly, with I, I only needed. Uh, let's see. I only needed do 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 four successes to finish, and then the rest is going to be dedicated to upgrading it. So one. Two, three, four. So the first four clear me out for getting the program running. Yep. So that gets me a T3 running. Uh, how many do you want to upgrade it to T4? Oh, you want a full upgrade, not just a partial? I am trying to bring this back up to snuff, because I plan to use this. Uh, Double the amount every time you want to upgrade it. 18, got it. So... One, two. Yeah, so three, getting a tier four, ten or five, higher, six. that's going to be a stupid amount, and you may actually not be able to do it with downtime actions alone. That's fine. Yep. That means I'll also have to integrate other software into it. Yep. Uh. After that, the only thing I got to look into is what the uh, what the next update would actually get me for. Improvements. The firmware updates, I mean. I'm not going to put into it because I already did my downtime. I'm just curious as to what the uh, what it would be for the what, it, what the actual next uh, improvement the firmware is supposed to give me is. I assume I can look through the the updates to see what they do. Matt? Um, oh, so you want the stats for the thing. No, I was... Um, well, I mean, the stats for the virus would be nice, but I was actually asking... Basically, I was just curious as to what the next firmware update for my uh, for my animatronic body is. What it actually does. Uh, you need to actually take time to split the, um, the code what? before you can kind of figure out what it does. So it doesn't have a changes list attached to it no change log uh no well that's just shitty programming okay or it's written by a computer even computers have change logs my friend but that's fine um from what you can tell it's a pretty it's it's almost like an overhaul of the current system uh, yeah no it's fine I'm, I'm not we can move along okay because I'm not, I can't work on that now, and I'm not going to take up more time working on that. So, okay, all right. So, y'all are sitting there, Luna. You're plugged into the wall, kind of working away early in the morning. Uh, Nadia snips 
kicks the door in, and then you hear a very uh, unpleasant uh, trill of uh, an instrument. Nick just jumps out of bed. Uh, uh, and you actually see her with a uh, ornate kind of uh, build bagpipes. And unfortunately, that's not playing very loud, but... Um, well, I don't want anything particularly loud right now. Yeah. And uh, everyone, in the bu- everyone in the bunk's like, Ah, oh, shit! Oh, God! Ah, oh, fuck! It's I'm marching gonna... day, boys and girls! I'm, I'm just going to quietly turn down the volume on my ears. <laughs> Nick's just putting his armor on. <laughs> Getting ready to go. It's like you guys just get up rather yeah. quick. I have no idea what's going on. Yep, you guys are uh, then proceeded as uh, she guys has to get you in the lockstep, and you guys march down to the training field. And uh, in addition to everyone, can I intercede here? Mm-hmm, sure. I'm just I'm just curious to what happened to all the other downtime actions for everybody else. Um, a lot of the downtime actions we've kind of proceeded like you guys did a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. He kicked out early and spent most of his day. You guys worked on Max last time. Okay. And that, that get... took your entire day. Building that, that's that that's all that I needed to know. Perfect. Yeah. That, that that Timberwolf took the entire day, plus whatever shit that Cody got up to in the deep of the night. And I didn't get downtime actions because I went to ace training. Yes. you That took all day. And then yep. you also stayed up late at night kind of doing some stuff with Cody a little bit. And then you guys had to go to bed. Yeah. So you See, guys... I'm, the, I'm the only one that didn't have shit they were doing <laughs> right. all day. Yep. Uh, you guys are going to be marched down to the training area. But everyone in the the, the bunkhouse is going to be joining you. Um, and it's not just your specific bunkhouse. Uh, all of them have been emptied. And you also hear other bagpipes. But they all kind of tune in and you know play the same at uh, the same tune. And eventually, uh, you guys are all marched out and lined up by uh, bunkhouse and you guys are going to be practicing your uh, marching different tunes different style of marching following orders uh, a lot of parade marching so are you guys able to turn uh, and you guys are going to be spending the great majority of the day if not pretty much all the day up until lunch um, doing this and no, there is no breakfast. Um, and if your bunkhouse can't get it right, uh, you guys will go past lunch and keep going until everyone in the bunkhouse gets it right. Uh, so it's just going to be a series of kind of a intelligence. So... Everyone just needs to pass one intelligence test. Because it's you guys are smart cookies. Execution is not too hard for I mean, you lovely, lovely bunch. You Jackie, you're really big. It's like, I have to turn for two people? That's... Hmm. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Next, you're like... Fuck is this? I'm an I'm an ace prospect. I don't do marching shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jackie, next, go ahead and roll a series again. Oh, no, Jackie, you, you you big you big lunk. She just needs to, you know, concentrate. That's all. Get going. See who's the the guy who's holding y'all up. Left foot, right arm. Oh right God. foot, left arm. No, f- <laughs> no, no. I've I I'm putting right foot, right arm, and left foot, left arm, and it's uh, not helping. You're getting a lot yep. of people. Just 
This is uh, yelling at you. Just... Sniffs is uh... kind of in your face, because kind of like, what? Can you not march? How am I supposed to give you a mech if you can't even march? Right, Mom. Oh, my God. There we almost, go. I'm not going to lie. I almost want to try working on my programming while he's failing. There you go, Nix. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. All right. So um, this is actually uh, a very proud tradition for the Iron Ears. Um, they have one of the largest forces. Uh, and when they do deploy, uh, they do actually. Uh, except if it's a like a deploy to a new base and or a uh, new uh, station, um, they don't just let you disembark. They leave with style. They actually go down rank and file and you know lockstep march into or out of the base if they're going to be moving in you know the whole force. Um, no other group does this to this such uh, a grand scale. And it is all done to pack pipes. And as they do have, if you wish, as a, if you wish, Jackie, a uh, Piper core. Pipes and drums. If you well, no, she, can't keep, she can't keep time uh, marching. How is she going to keep time on? Hey, 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 hey. I, I learn over time. <laughs> Slowly. Hey, it only took three rolls, probably like half the day. Uh, no, you guys are actually out a little earlier uh, before lunch. There's a couple other groups that are just like, I am so disinterested in this. <laughs> this is this Iron Eater shit. And it's like, you're on our base, you're gonna learn it! <laughs> Isn't this a Thunderhead's base? Technically, yes, but it's also our base. So... You guys are going to be moved to the side and uh, sent promptly to lunch, an early lunch. But since you missed breakfast, oh uh, man, you guys are hungry. Food. <laughs> eh. I could charge. It's been nice. Ah, I do Ooh. like the taste. Yeah, uh, no food. I like to see. Yes, uh, Apparently you like the taste of endless marching. You know what? It's uh, it's good for the coordination. I like it. Well, it depends on how uncoordinated you are. Uh, she's big. She is she's very big. Large. She just got a new body. Yeah, I'm also like, uh, what is it now? Not even a weekend. Still getting used to it, but you know what I mean. Is we just gotta just put a head down okay. and go from there. <clears throat> so after lunch, you guys are gonna devolve right into mecha theory. Now, a lot of this is gonna be uh, standard models, uh, weapons available, uh, modification practices. This is gonna be pretty pretty darn important for your future. So, um, first person, uh, I'm going to start it out with the resonant mecha lord. Um, <laughs> so create a dash, several dashes for me, Cody, to demark kind of your role that's coming up. All right. So getting advancement for you is going to be very hard, but this will be more of an information, uh, dump for you. Um, mm -hmm. Because you know a lot of this stuff, you know the practices. Um, you maybe move to a different grouping, mm -hmm. but just in case, they're going to basically run you through the normal class just in case uh, there is some stuff, some basic stuff that you may not have. Yeah. So well, let's take a peek a -deek at your gotcha shit just to see. Where you're at? Oh, you're already mech'd out of mech building. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, um, Cody can actually, uh, teach you're me. You're maxed out. You're going to be sent to a different class. I like. Oh, feels bad. <laughs> what about yeah, Cody? We'll see you soon. <laughs> I needed the Cody. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 
you walk in, you're like, what what class is this? Oh, I, I learned that a lot. Oh, yeah, no. That's in the wrong classroom. I'm running yeah. the wrong class. I'll be back. Yeah, wrong class. Um, <laughs> they're actually going to be taking you to uh, a mech hangar. And you're going to get a hands-on experience with uh, specifically hazard removal. You're going to be fitted with a bomb suit, and you're going to help de-arm a salvaged mech with live ordnance that they couldn't externally turn off. All right. Uh, there is a good chance you blow up and die. All right, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> they, they basically they'll give you some very specific instruction and they tell you most importantly to take it slow mm, and slow this mecha yourself. is in absolute tatters it hurts your heart uh, to see something like this and it is filled with extremely rare bits and pieces um, it looks like the Leah compartment's already been transmatted out because mm-hmm. it looks like there, there, there's some Leotech. Um, there is off in the side, once you are done with disarming this thing, uh, a fractured Leah canister that has been held in stasis for you. You are also going to be disarming that as your master kind of hold, crosses their arms, kind of <laughs> waiting for uh, their part of the training. Okay. So... Um, this one actually is going to be a different skill set than mech building. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is actually going to be a security role. All right. Which is, uh, they will give you, I'll give you an int roll to start to see if you can pull off getting the, uh, um, uh, the actual security skill right off the gate. All right. All right. You pick up a check mark. So you're not going in. At a minus 20. <laughs> right. right. Uh, roll security. Um, you get a plus 10 for taking it slow, because they're going to be right. watching you. But you are going to be disarming SRM missiles. All right. Um, hmm. OK. So far, so good. Um, there doesn't take too long. Um, there is also a breach in the power core. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to need to do something about that. Go ahead and roll security. Uh, with a plus 10 still? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, deal with that. And now for the Leah canister. All right, walk over. Yeah, you're not the only one in here. There's several other individuals who are also learning. So you're kind of going side by side with them, and they're doing pretty well. So that's actually going to be Leah you're going to roll. All right. Because screw that security stuff. You don't do security on Leah shit. You do Leah on Leah shit. Uh, does my master give me any bonuses? No, just a slight. Yeah. All right. This is a... Uh, how would you deal with it? All righty. Uh, so... Uh, you you have some ideas. Maybe. Hmm. Your master's just sitting there, arms crossed, like, all right, how are you going to deal with it? So, uh... When I lift the stasis, it's going to corrode. And, uh... Burn a hole through the deck plating. And then rapidly disperse. But that uh do want to show you a, a cool side bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So but first I want you to come up with a plan. And no, converting the canister to energy at this point when it's corrupted uh is not going to work. Actually, it will make it worse. It's like throwing water on an oil fire. All right, then. Um, so you can't turn into energy. Nope. Uh, you can't...
Uh, so what I know about Leah, uh, <clears throat> would I be able to essentially uh, take the energy from one canister and pour it into another canister? I guess pour it in a good yes. one. Yes, but you don't have a technique for that. And that's where your master mm -hmm. is going to teach you a new technique. Mm -hmm. A hard light shield will form around for a privacy setting. And let's see if you could pull off a Leah technique. Now, this will be a difficult one. Mm -hmm. But every single one is difficult, so you're going to need to pass me, uh, and you will need to shift your skin to Leah for this. Mm -hmm. uh, you will need to pass a Leah test. More degrees, obviously, the better. All right. Uh, so we're going to front load a boon on this. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> would Spark a Brilliant Supply here? Yes, it will. Okay. Then... Good luck. <laughs> Beautiful. You get first try. Great, <laughs> great roll. Eleven successes. That's that's the sauce. What you're looking for. Um. So this actually is a technique when you come across Leah particles that are in an unstable and exposed state. Mm -hmm. uh, as I told you before, Leah particles hate being in the semi-state it's in. It will disperse within seconds to particularly try and find a more stable energy state or state of matter or state of energy, whichever one it kind of devolves into. Mostly it'll just disperse into energy particles, ambient heat, electricity. It, it's kind of a mess. It's kind of how it devolves. Uh, this allows you to stabilize the state or keep it in its Leah state and transfer it move it around, so to speak. This is going to be really important because uh, a lot of your future uh, understanding of especially how you're going to do your Leah Soul, this is a very important technique when you do your muscle and tendon conversion. And if you do not master this technique, you will lose a very large part of your soul uh, when you do that conversion. Got it. So you definitely need to master this. But you get it first try, <laughs> and when you do pick it up, um, there is a section that does not uh, particularly. Um, uh, there's basically the Leah canister has been cracked open. Um, mm -hmm. A portion of it is for you to uh, send to a new canister, but this other portion, your master holds it off to the side, and it goes, mm -hmm. "Okay, so." There is going to be a dirty, dirty, dark secret that I'm going to tell you about Leah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to keep it to yourself because this requires level 9 clearance. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is a problem with Leah. A nasty problem. It's unstable. And it hates its current condition. And due to that instability, there is a sometimes... It will find a semi-transient stable state. Now, that may sound good, but it's actually the worst-case scenario. Uh, it actually turns into what we call phazon, which is a highly corruptive, highly invasive, and extremely dangerous energy state, which it is matter and energy at the same time, which is bad. But it's in a stable state, and what it does is it infects all other energy and matter property around it and converts it to phase up at an uncontrolled rate. It could go fast, it could go slow. All it is is highly corrosive, highly toxic, highly dangerous. Uh, probably the most lethal state you can find it in. This quarantine section that I have held in stasis is the cusp of phase on corruption. Um, there's not really good ways of dealing with it. Not at all. Uh, once it goes, once the transition is successful, and it will, basically once you see it, you need to purge it immediately. Because if it ever successfully turns, if you touch it as an ascended, that's it for your, that's it for you. You cut off what the part of your soul that it's touched. And pray you you got enough of your body removed 
mm-hmm. before the corruption spreads. And it eats energy, like throwing water, uh, or basically like, sorry, oil or some sort of uh, accelerant at an already, well, exploding fire. Matter slows it down. Denser the matter, the slower the the corrupt the the corruption spreads. Um, but it's inevitable. Uh, do you know what strange matter is? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Densest substance mm-hmm. in the world in the universe. But it's also the most stable substance. Uh, but one of the weird quirk properties mm-hmm. of strange matter is that. All other energy, all other states want to be like it because it's one of the most stable substances. Period, and that's how it will corrupt and change all other states of matter. All other states end, end up wanting to be in that stable state. Man, so it's just understanding that phason essentially is a form of strange matter. Then, yeah, understood. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Like, getting rid of it, throwing into a sun, it doesn't kill it. It just eventually will convert that star into phason at an extremely accelerated rate. You're probably the, the one that orbits Enigma, Earth, one year to convert the entire star. Star will actually die somewhere in that process. Uh, bring this to you because I didn't think I would ever have to show it to you. This canister, unfortunately, well, we only have one special way of dealing with it. Uh, we throw it in another dimension. Not our problem. It is our problem <clears throat> because we have to be very selective at which dimension we throw it in. Okay. Mm-hmm. There is a negative energy plane. If you can believe that shit. Uh, we throw it in there, and then it actually starves it and. The phason actually will devour itself. And when there's nothing left, it goes poof, it's gone. Now, there's no way you have enough energy to actually accomplish that task. And only when you are a fully ascended uh, can I attempt to teach it to you. Uh, Dimensional shifts are one of the most difficult maneuvers. And actually requires a very robustly assault to pull it off, which means if you don't successfully transition to a certain tier of ascended, you will not actually have enough power to do it, even if you know how to do it. You'll need an external power source to help. Um, so not so perfect. We actually lose a lot of ace pilots to this because they have usually the most Leah tech and they undergo some of the most severe punishments in combat. Just they, they fight the stuff that we just can't fight and their mechs take an extreme level of beatings and uh, yeah, they're exposed okay. to their systems inside are custom and prototype and, they have weird energy fluctuations, and the damage will then sometimes cause a phase on corruption. So, uh, usually when that happens, we collapse the space around the ace and send the ace and his mech to the negative energy plane, where they are never seen again. So, I had. A friend recently <clears throat> tell me about how they were going to how they learned how to jump from shadow to shadow. Yeah. Was that like Yeah negative That's energy? negative energy plane, yeah. Good to know. Also, that is a without a, a special tool. Uh There's no coming back. Like, you, you need the ability to move yourself through dimensions. One sec. He's gone. He's never coming back. 
shame. That's all your fault, Liam. All right, that's fair. I'll take the blame for this. Mm, good. I don't commit Sudoku. Got a puzzle. Uh, got a puzzle book right over here. Uh, yes. So I unfortunately need to be called away for 15 minutes. Uh, apparently, we got to move some Christmas stuff, and I'm one of the only people at home right now. So fuck me. So it's January 14. Yeah. Well. I don't really have a choice in this, so no. I'm just I'll be back. I'm more just curious as to why there's Christmas stuff still. That's all. Oh, uh, because like in my house, we don't take it down till after my birthday. All right, fair enough. When's your birthday, Char? Uh, in four days. Ah, you are, I think, a year or two days older than me. Four days. Six days, four days, right? Ja- January eighteenth. Mm-hmm. January eighteenth. Mine's January twenty second. Mm. Uh, how old are you? I am uh, turning twenty nine. Haha! Jokes on you. I'm turning twenty eight. I know. Oh, I'm once again the oldest person in the room, but only by a year this time, so fuck it. I guess technically two years. I'm turning 32 this year, 31 this year. Hey Johnny, yo, you're uh, you're pretty pretty close to thirty. I know. Don't yeah. let me think about it, because it's gonna Fuck you know. You guys. Oh, what was it? I'm already past thirty. Fuck you guys. Oh, I'm not the oldest person in the room. How old are you? <laughs> uh, I was born in '88. If my Math is right, and it probably isn't. I'm 33 or 34. Yeah, I'm only like two years younger than you. It's nice that I'm not the oldest, even if it's by just a couple of years. I, I usually in a lot of my game groups I ended up being the the oldest one in the group and I'm like I don't I don't know how this happens. This feels illegal. Nah, don't worry, it could be worse. I could be in my 50s. Yep, I am 33. I will be 34 on National Get Drunk Day. Good for you. Is that St. Patrick's Day? Yep. Kind of hilarious. I was born on National Get Drunk Day. I mean, that just gave your parents an excuse to promptly go out and celebrate. Probably. Alcohol. You know, we're probably going to have a small population uptick what with the whole COVID thing. Right. People bored in their houses, nothing else to do. We've yep. actually been on a global decline. Have we? Yep. Interesting. 2020 or 2000... Yeah, I think 2020 was the first year we started going negative. Interesting. All right. Color me wrong.
Well, I mean, I guess a pandemic will do that, too. Yeah, it's pretty fair. What with all the dead people? <laughs> uh, yeah. I can make that joke. I have family that died in it. I'm allowed. It's how that works, right? You you have to somehow profit off of a uh, personal tragedy. That 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 that's how capitalism works. Yes, you can see that the billionaires got a lot richer during the pandemic than. Uh, yeah. You see, they just uh, profited off of other people's personal tragedies, which is the other capitalism thing. I'm the part of capitalism where you benefit off your own suffering. I guess that's more an artistic bend than anything, though, isn't it? Now that I'm thinking about it. There was a exposition artist. I'm trying to remember his name, but he was famous because he used to do the wildest ass shit. And by wildest ass shit, I mean an example of one of his art pieces was going into a gallery and having somebody shoot him with a twenty two in front of a crowd. And then just that was the art piece. I remember there was Some TV station that had, like, asked him to come in and do an interview with them. And he's like, you... well, they asked him to come in and do an interview and put on, like, one of his expositions in the studio. And he's like, you, you know what I do, right? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, and, and you want me to come in and do it? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, okay. All right. And um, what he did for his piece for that as his bit was uh, when the the whole interview started, the, he, uh, like as soon as it started and they sat down and they made the introductions, he pulled out a Bowie knife, took the hostess hostage until they put the uh, interview on live so that they couldn't edit it. And then he calmly put it away and had a normal interview for the rest of the, uh, the show. The man was fucking weird. I think is fucking weird. I believe he's alive. With age, he has found, um, he has mellowed. Now he just does kind of odd art, uh, like art installations. Like one of them is there some big college or something where he put up a bunch of lampposts and created like a forest of lampposts outside of like, he was like a college or a museum or something. And that's what he's doing now is stuff like that. And people are like, what happened to the man that let himself get shot for art? And I think the correct answer to that is he turned 60. And maybe had fewer statements to make at that point. 
or if not fewer statements, at least less uh, abrupt ones. Man, I should find that guy's name. I think I'll go do that. His name was Chris Burden. Yeah. So completely unrelated to that whole thing about shooting people for art. Uh, would anybody like to help me with an art exhibition? <laughs> In regards to what? I mean, all you got to do is stand on the other end of a gallery and not move. No, thank you. What was that? No, thank you. Oh, come on. You'll make, like, at least 50 bucks. Nope. All right, at least 70 bucks. You drive a hard bargain, I'll do 80. No, thank you. Well, I tried. Johnny, how would you like to be part of an ex? No, thank you. Hmm. I'm going to let you down easy because I'm in Canada and I can't really teleport these days, so. Well, I mean, you don't have to teleport. There's a such thing as planes. It's true. Why the fuck is my phone going wild right now? Oh, I see. Well, my uncle's caught the COVID. It's, um... 
deliciously ironic because he's an anti-vaxxer. That's too bad. I say deliciously ironic because he is in good condition now. I, apparently that's what the buzzing was about, was updates on how he's doing in the hospital. Because he was having seizures, which was a bad thing. Yeah, makes sense. But he's not anymore. So now I can make jokes. I mean, I was probably going to make jokes anyway, but they would have been significantly less appropriate. And my mother would be very disappointed knowing I was making them. I mean, she'll still be if she ever found out, but, you know, I'll feel like negative amount of guilt for it now. So, I don't know if you guys heard about this story, but Drake uh, is being sued by a woman. Uh, so, oh, wait, Drake. To, cl to clarify, which Drake? The, the, art, artist? the rap artist, yeah. Okay, continue that. Uh,. Being sued by one, they had consensual sex. Uh, he used protection. Good on him. Uh, and threw the condom away. Um, she went and dug up the condom and was trying to get herself pregnant. Uh, what she didn't know is Drake apparently puts Tabasco sauce inside his condoms after they've been used. Ah, so okay, I see. <laughs> well, that's oh, that's unfortunate. So somebody got a hoo ha full of Tabasco sauce. Oh, so that's why she's suing him. Yeah, <laughs> that's very. Uh, that's a very stupid reason to sue somebody. <laughs> I know, well, right? I don't think they're shameful enough to. Uh, put it up the yeehaw so um why would they be shameful enough to sue another person because of that you know i was gonna say something about lowering standards but you know, like you know that's about right I mean, if you think about it a woman was trying to get pregnant off the jizz left in a condom that means she was e the general options are either she's psychotic enough to be stalking him to want to force his child to try to force some claim over him, or with the intention of suing him for half of his future earnings because she's a money grubbing gold digger. Mm hmm. Honestly, 50 50 odds. Right? I mean, she's fucking crazy either way. There's just two very different kinds of crazy. It's just that one's technically socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. And it's the gold digger. And the other one is just funny. <laughs> Absolutely um... hilarious. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, also, fun fact, I don't know if anyone heard about this, but Prince Andrews, Duke of York, has had his title and his rank and his lands revoked. Well, he, he had his title and his rank revoked and his land seized. Curious as to why. Uh, Jeff Bezos. Not Jeff Bezos. Ah, uh, fuck, what is his name? 
Mm-mm-mm. About to say Jeff Bezos, the man of no. Amazon, is now dictating royal titles. I mean, no, it was inevitable. No, I feel. Uh, you know, so it was. He has several. Uh, Jeffrey Einstein. Einstein. Yeah, that's what it was. Jeffrey uh, Einstein. Ein- Einstein. 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 The guy we don't like, and uh, yeah. the giant cover-up of, you know. A man that definitely, definitely did not kill himself in prison. He was assassinated by the Illuminati. Or at least his friends in the corporate world that didn't want him to point corporate fingers. and a uh, fucking political world. All yep. over the fucking place. Everywhere. I'm gonna blame Trump. I don't. I don't know why. It just feels right. It this. It just feels like the sort of thing you should blame him for, you know. But well, um. So. Uh. Yeah. He's had his. Uh. <laughs> title, lands, rank revoked. So he has to defend himself as an average cit- private citizen with a bank account of zero dollars. Nice. Nice. Man, it's... <laughs> I'm sorry. The fact that it's literally the bourgeoisie that's getting screwed for once is just... By the so... other bourgeoisie? Yes. The other bourgeoisie who are trying to protect their reputations. Well, it was the Queen of England that did it, so, you know. Oh, yeah, no, she's definitely, uh... Yeah, all right. She also received a, how was it, an official letter of complaint from, I think, over 30 uh, high-ranking military officers saying they wanted his rank revoked the same day that she, uh stripped him of his title and rank. Wow, all right. You know, that's uh that's actually a long standing issue in uh, among English politicians too. In what? Uh child pornography and sexual assault. Do you know the song uh, by Oingo Boingo, I Like Little Girls? Nope. Well, it is a song that a British man wrote about Parliament back in 90-something. I mean, I could believe it. Uh... <laughs> I remember there was a TikTok of this like punk rocker girl uh singing American Idiot. And she was like, Remember guys, vote for Trump. Everyone stopped and looked at her and like You you do realize Green Day hates Absolutely Trump, hates right? Trump. You you do realize being punk is being liberal? Do you really, like, like, even if you're not going to be liberal and punk, at the minimum, you're going to be anti-establishment and punk. That's, huh. that's the bare minimum. Yeah, right? Well, it's like... It's just so weird how you can be conservative and punk. That... You can't be, though. That's, that's like, inherently against punk. And, like, in her comments, she was trying to say how being punk wasn't political. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 being punk is political. Like, that's the whole... Th- that's that's the point. It's just, it's to look at the big guy on top and tell them to go fuck themselves. That's, that's what punk's about. <laughs> ah, people. People these days. Right. Eh, whatever. 
I, I guess there is some sort of ironic punk going on when you're rebelling against the other punks by being conservative. Uh, yeah, that's a thought. Why you would want to, I don't know, but, you know, that's... That, you know, like, at least that, you know? Right. Well, it's almost like that time when, um, before it was punk and it was just called, uh... It's been called a lot of things. I don't know, I'm trying Over to remember. Years. I think it was just called Alternative originally. Alt-Rock, I don't, yeah. I don't remember. Um... And then, like, so, like, there's everyone else, and then the skinheads came onto the scene. And then they immediately, like, ditched everything attached to it, yeah. And just swapped it over to punk instead, because they were like, oh no. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> uh, it was really funny. Uh, my mom was telling me a story about when she, uh, she, mom was a punk girl, was telling me a story about how she was at a punk concert. Uh, and her best friend, uh, with her best friend, and at the time, and he became a skinhead. All right. Uh, thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, apparently, I'm the only one qualified to know how to put the artificial tree segments back the way they need to go into the bags. <sighs> I can tell you why. It's because you broke a foot. Well, I, I didn't really do the lifting. It's uh, I put a manager. method together for them. So we have a bunch of bungee cables, little ones, and mm. uh, bubble wrap. And there's a specific method of putting it back together because um, these, you know, if you don't put them, store them correctly, uh, they tend to break. But that's done. Thank you for your patience. I apologize. No stress. It happens, my friend. Yeah. We've just been okay. shooting the shit. Talked about a man that, uh, hey, you want to make 50 bucks doing an art installation with me? I promise you won't get shot much. Hmm. Well, on a side note, we can continue on with the story. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. Good. Yep. That, that's, a, that's a road we're not going to go, we're not going to take. It's a turn off the, the, the main the highway. Short... The short answer is there was a guy that did exposition, uh, like, uh, like, like, like they did, uh, he did art shows where he would do like, you know, actual events. And one of them was just called shoot. And he just got somebody to shoot him with a small caliber rifle in the arm. And that was the, that was his art exposition. And it, yeah, no guy was, uh, guy had some problems. We can move on now. Pew! Basically. Alright, so, uh, yeah, you got a little demonstration, and, uh, yeah, getting out of the negative energy plane if you're not a dimensional being. Not really possible unless you have a special technique, but you need to be strong enough to do that. And uh, negative energy plane is death to ascend it. Won't go there. There's oh, plenty of other ways there. I'll have from moving around other than negative energy. Well, there's other dimensions. That's just the one we throw the bad stuff in. Exactly. Again, I'll avoid it. <laughs> it helps if you have meat and matter on you. That it preserves you longer. Good to know. And the fan probably won't do it, though. He's probably going to be an idiot to do it again. Anyways. Okay, cool. Um, uh, moving on to the others. Because that's basically your entire lesson until dinner. Uh, everyone?
one, you are going to get uh, just a series of rolls. Um, let's see. Johnny. What's up? Do a series of dash lines or a bunch of dashes and then uh, roll me 5d100. It's basically five rolls for uh, let's see if you can get some mech building. Uh, uh, so if we're looking marks? for intelligence. Yeah. What's uh, your mech building currently? I don't, uh, mech building. Let's see if I have mech building. I don't have mech building. Okay. Uh, since you are an iron eater, you'll pick up a little extra. You'll pick up two check marks in mech building. Okay. Trade. Is mech building a trade? Excellent. Yes. I've engineered. Right. Uh, Nix, you're next. Dash. Dash. We're all supposed to be rolling? You, yes. You specifically. Sorry. Go ahead and make some dash lines derp, and roll me 5 derp, to 100. Derp, derp, derp. derp. God damn it, keyboard work. Go ahead and add one check mark of mech building. This is trade mech building, correct? Correct. Liam, you next. All right. I'm doing five rolls. Correct. There you go. Cool, so there's one trade. One 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 mark. Got it. His Matt's now typing at us. All right, I hope they're done. <sighs> I asked them if we could do this tomorrow, and they're like, well, we don't have time. We're not going to be gone tomorrow, so I'm basically screwed. Hate it. But all right, um, that'll be your specific dissertation into mech construction. Uh, a lot of it's... Mm, fuck. It's not that loud. I don't think. Wasn't that loud for me? It's pretty deafening to me. Oh, mm. Let's see. I mean, if you listen. No, I mean, it's not that loud on our end, but if it's loud on your end, then fair enough. I could barely hear myself think through my headphones.
All right. I think it's a little better. All right. So, uh, you guys will actually get to meet up in the mess hall, which is one of my favorite maps. How day. Well, I mean, we know where I'm arrowing <laughs> straight to that meat. Meat. Everyone likes the meat. Okay. Yeah, um, I kind of replenished my skin preserves. Indeed. Gotten a couple desires times. for fried food. <laughs> Back to this place again. Just Not for me. I have been checking each different place. Yeah. Jackie, you get your use. Oh, yeah. Cody, you're the first one to have gone to the Illuminati pizza. Yep. <laughs> and they're like... The guy kind of looks left, looks right, kind of leans in conspiratorially. So are you uh, here for the... <clears throat> The pie. Yeah, I'm here for the pie. Okay. What type of pie? I need an all meat on sweet barbecue sauce. No, no, no. You got, you got to You got to You got to read it off the list. You can't just say we don't. We're a pie joint. We we serve pies. He does air quotations. And then uh -huh. there's literally a sign with the lingo. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at it. I'm like, it's to so an all meat is like super size me. Mm. So there's like weird code terms for all the different toppings <laughs> and the different it's... styles of pizza. Uh, and okay. basically, it, if it, it's like listening to like just gibberish, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look at it. I'm like, all right, all right. I need you to supersize me hmm. on uh, Dreams of Hawaii. Yep, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's it? <laughs> yep. Just all of it. Yeah. Big as you uh, get. How do you like your pie shaped? And how do you want it cut? I want it standard cut. Yeah, uh, good cuts. And I want it at least big enough to where I have to take half of it home. Okay. Did you order the type of pizza? Yeah. Because there's, you know, New York uh, thin crust, cheesy uh, uh, garlic bread crust. Like there's all sorts of. Chicago. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll get a pizza. Yeah. Labeled in a box called pie. Mm. <laughs> and there's pizza it. on it, but it's crossed out. <laughs> I'm just going to take it and I'll give him a wink and just hold it casually walk back. I was like, yeah. See you around. See ya. Alright. Jackie, I was like, Hey, Biggin. You back so soon? I mean, it's, it's been a day, hasn't it? Yeah. You don't want to try any of this other scrumptious food? I mean, you're missing out a lot. You know, I've uh, I've said my piece already, but, uh, you know, I... No, keep... <laughs> uh, but uh, you're my favorite, so I just uh, I gotta keep coming back. All right. So you insist. <laughs> and she'll give you an extra big portion. Nice. And for you, sugar. Ogre. Sorry, I'm having problems. Sorry. Focus is fully on game. Will not divert. Uh huh. Replay. And you sugar? Oh, don't know. First time here. Oh, there's a man. <laughs> He's gonna 
Like usual, browse the menu. Uh, anything fried, I'm guessing. Well, it's not just fried. But if you want fried, I can do fried. Well, Sahu's always fun, but... You know what? I have not gone wrong yet in trusting the chef. Oh? Yeah, learned that. From You're going to get a surf and turf dish. <laughs> kind of a little bit of everything. We will take it and happily thank her. Hmm. I have a good one. Horace kind of looks at you, Luna. You're back. I hungry have for the meats. Are you? Give me the flesh of the deceased. <laughs> I shall. Yes. <laughs> you shall sup upon their corpse and grow fat with strength. Yes. I'm glad you're getting into this joke now. <laughs> We're joking. No. <laughs> right. Let's do this. Meet me. And he will stack, based <laughs> off of your dietary requirements, stack three, uh, not as large as the other, almost like dinner plate size pieces of meat. Um, three different cuts. Hmm. That'll do it. Yes. Glorious meat. Thank you, good sir. Heads back to the table, just plops down with a pile of meat and just starts chowing through. Hmm. Sweet, sweet skin meat. <laughs> what, you think I'm doing this for any other reason? This is so I can have skin again. These yeah. are my skin reserves. You, you, you know, you're really prone to being skinned. Yeah, In I most know that, cases, well, I would call that a bad thing. <laughs> well, you know... Uh... Last time I didn't so much get skinned as sandblasted, so I don't know if that counts. More rust blasted, but fair enough. It still technically skinned you. I well, mean, it, it, it we could we can arguably call the planet an enemy as it is out to kill us. But it is a planet, so I feel weird about. Well, how sentient is the planet? I don't know. Have you investigated? I haven't yet. But that sounds like a project. <laughs> You're welcome. If you want another one, I can always give you a job. Oh, well, I already have something I need to be doing. I have a couple projects moving now. Yeah, that's fair. Luna. What? Yes? I was wondering if I could... Uh, get your thoughts and figure out how you do your little energy transmission. Oh, yes. We can certainly run some experimentation, figure things out. Do you want to experiment with me? You make it sound sexual. I was trying to, yes. Understand that there's only one person in my heart. So, is it your mother? No. Her name's mm. Ashley. Oh! Oh, oh shit! I was gonna make fun of you. You're actually serious. Yes, yes. He, he has somebody back on Terra. I. Fair enough. Uh, I was more kidding with the flirting thing, but um, no, if you got somebody, I'm not gonna get in the way of that. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a new form of energy transmission. Yes. Because uh, I'm kind of in a rough position. I need to get an A-ring budget within a month, so... Why? I can show you later. Now, you see, when you say it like that, once we're getting, once again, we're getting back to the sexual thing. How is I guarantee you, it's big, hard, and will terrify you. Thank you! Okay, we're in. I'm confused. 
<laughs> uh, I can help you with that. Uh, you see, the closet door is right over there. But no, oh, I was... Our closet, help me. He, he, he's... He, please, at least for the purposes of Cody, disable those perverse subroutines. <laughs> She's not serious, but <laughs> this is hilarious now. Right? But, um... I, I was serious about the job thing. She's if like, no, I'm in. No, 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 I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm always in for some experimentation. Not like that. And like that. Giggity, giggity. And, anyway. Uh, by the way, Cody. Hmm? Since you let me hire you, you should check into your new permissions and authorizations. Uh, Lexi, pull up my permissions and authorizations, please. Matt. Matt. Uh, then Lexi, my sorry, I was author. trying to fill out a handout. Out oh, of I'm my sorry. thousands. Uh, do my permissions and authorizations get bumped? Only one tier, but yeah. Uh, uh, but that was during the last session. Yeah. Yeah, I was referring to when I hired him. Um, You didn't get your authorization bumped during today lesson with your master that was a um i'm not supposed to tell you this but uh since right. it's literally critical to your survival right no no uh you're two, three. Was wondering yeah nix was wondering if i got authorization bumps from being recruited Hired as, as a research, research team yeah no not at all <laughs> oh <laughs> like you're in the leah program that's a mm -hmm. different level of mm. Need to know. Uh, that's also if you can get any Leah on your even level one mm -hmm. on board as your research team next, that just clears the requirement. Period. Oh, because a Leah tech is so overqualified. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. That they could literally do the work of an entire research team by themselves and still outperform. Gotcha. Even though it's a level one tech. But he's just going to be like, uh, as to our friendly neighborhood robot, Luda, hmm? pay will be shit to the beginning until I actually get my income coming in, but just. Best now. <laughs> just, uh. Or Luna, you can come on board with my team and you'll get better pay. <gasps> Cyber security. Am. am I getting multiple job offers? How lovely! <laughs> Quick, let's start a bidding war. Who's offering me what here? I mean, <laughs> technically, as Cody was hired as my, my research team lead, you working for him wouldn't be preventing you from working for me so I would consider this more of a joint offer mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, look mm -hmm. I have a C-rank budget renewable mm -hmm. stop trying to snipe when we can work together what? I have no idea what you're talking about this is just force of habit You see, that, I, that's I, why I, I'm I, saying stop I'm trying to snipe we can work together <laughs> So I'm hearing uh, C-rank budget, uh, at least a partial on that. That's, that's good, that's good. What are you offering? Because you can say working together all you like, but you're not actually saying what you're offering. The benefits that will come about from working with an ace candidate... Yeah, you see, I worked with an ace recently, and all she gave me was like 500 rec. Yeah, that's a drop in the bucket. That's what I'm expected to get within the next month as a monthly income. As mm. a fully certified ace, that's literally chump change. Yes, I, I understand that. And uh, that was my point of the only in that sentence. I'm no, fully that, aware that, that, is, I... that is why I'm saying, with you assisting... It betters my odds of becoming an ace, 
which will better my odds of giving you a better pay in the future. Cool. What are you offering me now? You have the exact same as the rest of us. This mm -hmm. is more of a help me to help you so that we can all do better. He does not know how to negotiate, does he? Well, look. I I was I'm not saying no. No, no, no. Understand? I'm not <laughs> saying no, but he's just she just does not know how to negotiate, does he? So my negotiation training does not come into play here because my negotiation training is the equivalent of you're going to do this. You spoke in argument. You get beaten until you agree. That's what I was taught. That would not be helpful here. No, no, it wouldn't. We're definitely going to need to get you some proper, uh, you know, negotiation training because the violence does not, uh, threats of violence don't work on me. Sorry. Yeah, obviously. That's why I'm not using it. Oh, you can't use logic, though. That's good. That's good. It's good. If you were a human, I'd be giving you a noogie right now. Stop being a smartass and work with me, damn it. <laughs> I am eternally switched onto the smartass mode. Unfortunately, that part of my behavioral programs are well, they're just corrupted. I may have corrupted them myself. That's no end of amusing. But still, just work with me here, damn it. Oh, fine. Um, it's not like I don't help you guys out often enough with my ability. What ability? Uh, I have a natural ability to play the fates, as it were, bettering your odds at doing what you need to do. Really? Yes. Cody, in particular, was... Recently aided by me. Well, that's so, like, me. what do you do? When you would normally fail at something, if it is important enough, it can draw my attention, and I can... I hesitate to say shift fate because it doesn't really fit, but it's the closest descriptor I can think of to... Better your odds. That's weird, not gonna lie. I could use your help on a project that I'm gonna be getting into then. We can discuss that somewhere a little bit more private later. Sounds like a plan. It's mostly a plan. <laughs> Call it like 99.9% .9 of a plan. It is a vague idea that is reminiscent of a plan. Got it. That's the one. <laughs> well, you see, it's in the planning phase. So you're planning the plan. Got it. At the planning phase, yes. <laughs> uh, call it an operation. Eh. With about, oh, I'd say a... Uh, 80% chance of killing us. Well, what are you doing? I'm... You don't want to ask that question. That means it's stupid and suicidal, but if it succeeds, it will have a ludicrous payout. I assume if we aid, we will all get to take part in this payout? Uh, this was going to be an offer in the exchange of my assistance with his stuff in the short term in exchange for assistance with my stuff type of deal. Potentially, if he can help. Actually, no, he's probably the only one that can help. Because of the fate thing, specifically. So no, if you asked if you were to hop in, there would be no pay for you because there's no hard money here. Who knows? There's always the odds of finding something along the way. Oh, I mean, there's several things I could gain from it. Violently. Horribly. But, um, odds aren't odds lean towards death. Well, we'll have to try to shift those odds. 
Well, exactly why I'm looking to get a hold of somebody that can uh, tweak them with me. Could be interesting. Tweak, tweak. Tweaking. To help you out if you survive, I get a cybersecurity specialist in the form of a chiropractor. Generally speaking, I do exchange of favors, uh, you know, favor for favor type thing, but you know, that's just me. We'll see what happens. But I mean, know. at worst, you'd end up with no uh, chiropractor. Because I'll yeah. be dead. Like I said, we'll have to try to prevent that. Yes, exactly. Moving along, because I can't actually have that conversation in this particular area. So, beyond all of that... Um, what's the rest of our day supposed to be again? I will... Uh, Matt, I'll, I'll check to see if there's a schedule up currently of any sort. Uh, regarding the training? Yes. Uh, not really, other than the usual morning, but Major Snips wakes you guys up and tells you what you're doing basically day by day to keep you on your toes. Mm -hmm. I mean, to expect she, pretty much anything and everything. She's given us absolutely nothing other than get up, do marching, go eat lunch so far, right? No, you guys went to class. This oh, is dinner. Class. Oh, this is dinner. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you got, your day is gone. So oh, nothing God. is left for the end of the day. Well, you guys get basically a little bit of downtime. Uh, at the end of every day, you always get a little bit of downtime, unless uh, your commanding officer basically says straight to bed with you because uh, we have something coming up tomorrow. Uh, but usually, you're given after dinner a little bit of downtime. Which is a lot of downtime for you because you don't sleep. So, right. Well, I mean, I get that that actually gives uh gives some time to go discuss some things in places and things. Well, there's a conveniently quiet area called the cultivation chamber. Jackie, care to join us in some cultivation, or at least me? Uh, oh. no. No, uh, not, we need something a little more private than that. I got a place. <sighs> Fine. I'll join you in the cult. Uh, uh, if you care to join me in cultivating, I'll join you a bit later, Jackie. All right. Um, I guess I'll just stick with Cody. Make sure he stays at a troll. You know how it should be. Good luck. Hey, Jack, you want to hey. go work out? You want to work out? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll spot you. Just going to stand up, about to walk away. Turns back, looks at Cody. Hey, Cody. Hmm? Don't forget your promise to Atlas. Turns and walks away. That sounds ominous. <laughs> As she's just like, nope, not that way. This way. <laughs> he did offer to help you if you need it. <laughs> But that was an out of character reminder as mm. well, just in case. Oh no, I remember. <laughs> I remember. He is also not going to let me forget either. <laughs> so, so Mr. Fate Man. Yep, Nix and Luna are wandering off. I guess. Not wandering, going to very specific locations down specific pathways. As, I mean. How familiar is your character with the base? I, I, I don't know how much you guys have explored. Uh, we've explored a little bit. Most of our time before you joined was taken up with training, training, training. Got it. So she's leading you down those, those, uh, those, those uh, you know, corridors where she, she's just humming and not answering questions currently. Until uh, Matt. Mm-hmm. She's just using her navigation programs because I assume she has a, at least a basic one for places she's been to get back to that uh, broken camera. Yeah, that's not a. Once you know the route, as long as you start from the barracks, it's not particularly hard to retrace and your I'm, steps. And I'm kind of 
internally mapping the base as I move along. So, but um, yeah, once we are uh, like, we'll, we'll arrive at a place that um, the cameras are broken. Like, uh, for those who have lived thing. under the yoke and the, their entire existence, uh, with the Thunderhead, a broken camera. It's almost a taboo. It's almost a forsaken territory. Right. So we are on a timer now. Yep. And I'll I'll kind of set a mental timer based off of effectively the the timing for the last time I was here. I'm going to be like, right, i got to keep this real short. You know that sector you told me not to go to? Yeah, I figured you were going to do something stupid. You're trying to go there, aren't you? Well, I have been... I've made a deal to get myself... You know that thing you guys recommended, the whole shadow thing? Shade? Shadow? The what is it? Shroud? Shroud, yes, Shroud. Yes. Yeah. I made a deal to get a level 5 version of that implanted into me. Okay. The deal is, I get the individual in question, the access codes to the main corridor entrance to level tw the the sector twelve here. Mm -hmm. I need to contend with a particularly nasty trio of viruses to do so. So mm -hmm. I could use a little. Fate manipulation, getting that handled. The actual getting in and the like, I'm going to have to do myself. No choices on that. Figured. You know the whole thing where I don't really have bones? Yeah, yeah. I have to go to through the ventilation. Yeah, be careful. There are things in there that will just flat murder you. Yeah, I've, I've been warned, forewarned, and honestly, it was expected to begin with. You, you should find a gun. As, you know, guns aren't a bad idea. But, uh, yeah, no. So, that's what I'm after. And the only reason I took you out this way is no ears are listening here. And I'd rather not to talk about the fact that I'm going there for you know, any reason where people can actually hear? No, that's entirely fair. Yeah, I, I didn't think uh, I didn't think you'd think it was a uh, unreasonable thing. But yeah, no. Um, I won't give you details on the employer because you know, no, I'm a professional. That's, that's entirely fair. As you seem to like challenges, I will be letting you know, since ears aren't listening, that the primary people you'd be acting as security against are other ace candidates. Oh. And do you know if they're making deals with other chiropractors? If they're anywhere near as intelligent as I am. Hmm. Well, that just means I'll be playing with people on the net. And that'll be fun. Uh, the other chiropractor on base. Don't trust him. He's a snitch. Hmm. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, you know, thought that'd be a good thing to pass along. Apparently, he's the sort to report anything out of the ordinary to Thunderhead directly and to the base commander. And anybody he thinks will uh, give him something for it. So uh, he's gone beyond brown nose to brown face. It, yeah, something like that. At least that's what I have been informed thus far. I still haven't met him in person. Well, I th theoretically, he might be avoiding me. I mean, or it's just a big base. Uh, possibly a combination of the two. But sounds good. My 
abilities are always ready unless they're expended. How many uses? It changes depending on the situation. I always try to keep a couple in reserve in case something big happens. You know how it is. Yep, no, that's fair. That's fair. How many would you be able to make available to me for the duration of this particular endeavor? Uh, as many as I can. It would literally depend on what has been going on that day if, as it changes by the day. Hmm. Little unreliable, but workable, nonetheless. I, I prefer have... something that's a bit more concrete, but, you know. I I have a fair number of uses of it. Uh, and they refresh by the day, so... Cool. So when I'm protecting your systems, am I going to be hiding Leah information and the like from your other candidates as well? I just need to know what level of fucked I'm going to be if people uh, look too closely at what I'm looking at. Well, considering as part of defending my information, you will be defending the research lab that Cody is working in because he's my research team. Generally so, speaking, probably. So there's a high probability as C Cody's Cody, and he has a tendency to stick his nose into things way beyond his pay grade. As anybody with any level hey of now. confidence does. <laughs> hey now. You resemble this remark. It's just, just like, I mean, anybody who's competent tends to stick their nose in places that doesn't belong. I mean, that's oh, just I, a part of it. Oh, I do not disagree. How, how the hell do you think somebody who's been in the freaking military less than a week hasn't even got out of boot camp yet has managed to get into the ACE training program? Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I do have the base commander's personal line. Yeah, I got that I... on my first day. Mostly because he threatened to kill me. She threatened to kill me. They threatened to kill me. I'm not clear on their gender. It, it is possibly an apt description as they are probably reasonably considered more machine than person right now. What with being an iron eater and all. Well, so am I. Yeah, but you have decided a gender that you want to be. At least That's currently, fair. as I assume you can probably shift your physical stature to be what you want. I have not experimented too, too heavily, but I get the implications that, generally speaking, no. One Interesting. Of those, one of the limitations, from what I understand, their forms for my robotic ilk don't typically change from the template preset. You, but I have... you should you should find a way of inputting a I think you call it a backdoor to the program allowing you to do unauthorized modifications. Oh, I'm already doing lots of unauthorized uh, modifications, but that particular one would well, it's kind of like saying, oh, let me just make a backdoor into sector twelve. I mean, that's what you're about to try and do, so don't no. give me that. <laughs> hey, no, no. I'm not trying to create a back door. I'm trying to open the front door with the key. Uh, and you're telling me that while you're in, you're not going to try and do that. I didn't say I wasn't going to try. Case and point. Honestly, I have a few ideas, but I need... Um... I need to look at things a bit longer. But yeah, so you're in? I have no problem trying to assist you with what I am able. Great. Um, I'm trying not to involve the rest of the group for the reasons of they can't really help and I don't want to risk their lives. <laughs> no, that is entirely fair. If you find any interesting tech back there, at least split it with me, as I am going to be needing some ludicrously high-tech shit for my eventual mech. 
I mean, there is a slim chance of the possibility of me gaining access to at least a level 8 virus program. Um, point of reference on that, uh, it can take 8 actions in about a second. Per second. Yeah, having that as a defensive program guarding my important shit would be highly valuable. That's if I can get it, and it doesn't kill me instead. Which, you know, it probably will. Just going to pat you on the shoulder. Well, I mm -hmm. wish you luck. I'm going to go and try to cultivate some before going to bed. Yes, please. Yes. Agreement done. Da 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 da. Uh, actually, you know, just wait here for like, oh, ten minutes. Then head back. As I have important shit to do. Why don't you do the waiting? Mm. Because you can do cyber shit in your head while I can't. Mm. You see, the thing of that, as she's already backing away, is I was the loser that got stuck here last time. Bye! Walks around a corner. <laughs> He's like, and yet, as he calls out, you realize I'm the asshole who doesn't have to give a shit. Whistling loudly as she keeps going faster. He'll wait around for about five minutes. You don't have to wait particularly long. I don't. I don't even know why. Well, I don't. I don't really know if anybody's keeping an eye on me or anything. But you know, safety precautions. But yeah. Otherwise, uh, after that, I'm. I'm going to head off to do cultivation. Blat. That's done, Matt. We're done. No. No. Uh, let's me prep some stuff. Me? You're still done. Okay. <laughs> so we got people who are cultivating. You're going to go probably into the dark. Who, me? Uh, I was going to... I was going to actually start looking into that, uh, that firmware update to see what I can pull off of it. And if it's worth diverting any attention to that instead of just upgrading my fucking... Uh, Sure. Virus. Um. What about our uh, homies? Here, we're gonna go work out, Matt. Ah, uh, yeah, let's work out. Ho ho yes. ho! All right, so we'll do a little bit of cultivation first. Um, yeah, if, if you want to actually get some sleep, uh, four downtime actions is what you're going to get. And if you want to push for more, uh, you could go is, later in the night. Is that already doubled because of my DTA? It's not already doubled, no. Okay, so I would then have eight downtime actions, which mm -hmm. I will throw into cultivation. Okay. Uh, what are you aiming for? Removing my need for sleep. Mm. Where the heck did I put that? It's not that. Ah, there it is. Yeah, go ahead and roll your uh, your potential. Uh, this is a technique that's already been built by Duke, so it's not too hard. But you do need World Soul. Do 
Do you have that technique from him? No. You'll have to cultivate that as well. Uh, and it takes five downtime actions for each new cultivation, doesn't it? Um, let me double check my lists. But probably downtime actions. Yeah, cost of training potentia five with no additional assistance. Yep, unfortunately, yeah, for an entry. Uh, you could push for an extra couple hours for an extra one, but that would make it two, so that would end up being another five. <sighs> yeah, and then with having that, I would need one less hour of sleep, so... It wouldn't penalize me as much. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll it. Nice. Which also gives me an extra downtime action. Uh-huh. Uh, Jackie, were you wanting to cultivate? No. Uh, no. I need to read the manual, figure that shit out, but uh, I can pump iron and then kind of read it over at the same time. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna read with one hand, curl with the other. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's like the thinker pose. Become yeah. the swallest nerd. Uh, so yeah. For ten. Okay. Um. You can cultivate that, but at the same time, um. You still need to do uh, meditation to get the sleep. So. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can also just add it to progress towards something. So. Yeah, I'm just going to add it towards my progress of all upgrading through Fire and Flames. Okay. So I will be a little more tired than usual tomorrow. And after that, I'm just going to go sack out. Okay. Um, Jackie. Yeah. You're working out. Mm hmm. How rigorous? Uh, enough that I can read the cultivation manual and do it at the same time, so I don't know how much that would be. I wouldn't push you. Your athletics are jacked. Your strength is jacked. Uh, you would actually have to probably get a spotter for the type of work you, you need done. I see. I was going to spot for, uh, for Cody. No, yeah, then you'll actually give him significant bonuses for... Uh, for the workout. So, um, Cody, you're working on which characteristics that? Uh, we're going to work on. Cody needs to get swallowed. So, toughness? Okay. So, um, Jackie, I'm actually going to have you. Uh,. Roll me strength. Because, Cody, um, you are going to do some endurance. And, Jackie, you barely managed to properly control your strength. Um, especially during the medicine ball toss, where uh, he, Jackie will throw a uh, medicine ball at your abs. And you sit there and you take punishment. And instead of doing overdoing it a little bit and nearly hurting poor Cody, uh, you can actually try it. So let's see that toughness roll, Cody. All right. Let's see what we got uh, here. Any bonuses or no? Hmm. 
No bonuses, right? No. <laughs> Not on the first one. Sure. Um, so, with her help, uh, you're going to get a plus 10 to the next roll. Okay. Mm, yeah. Cool. And then... Uh, I'll have to roll two more, one with a plus 20, and the other one with plus 30. Nice, and... Okay, increase your toughness by three. Three through three? No, just just three. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying three through three, uh, Matt. Okay, yeah. No, you, <laughs> you got me there. That would be some special-ass numbers right there for your other character. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cody, uh, you hurt. Mm -hmm. Ouchie. Everything just protests, sore. Um, you're bruised in several places. Yes, like Jackie. I thank you for this. Don't worry. The core is the uh, the fastest to heal, so you should be fine. Oh, good to know. Ow. Ow. Just make my way off. Uh, Jackie, uh, that was more of an exercise in control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you, uh, you start reading. All right, I got uh, eight town time actions plus two. For World Soul. Uh, two of them will be used, unfortunately, to help Cody. That's to fine. Them. That's fine. So, uh, reading. Yes. What is uh, the uh, Iron Eater's manual all about? Uh -huh. The cultivation manual? Yeah. All right. So, cultivation manual is actually. Um, done inside the cockpit of a mech. Okay. So you will make your way downtown, and you will sit in the cockpit of the Timberwolf, which growls at your as, at you as you arrive. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of hop inside, the whole thing just boots on, without you having to put the key in or anything. Uh, basic systems. The engine doesn't fire, not without the key, but um, basic onboarding systems boot on. All right. Uh, continue on page one now that I'm inside the cockpit. Okay. So uh, I'm actually going to have you roll uh, either a logic or basin test. I have logic. Um, okay. What was the other one you said? Or base int, if you don't have base logic. Int. Yeah, yeah. But if you have logic, that's what you go with. All right. Off to a good start. Um so for the manual, there are very few basics because a lot of it ends up being a kind of a specialized journey. But one of the basics is extension of self uh, into the mech. Right. So uh, the way it's actually done is um, you're going to want to cultivate external potentia and imbue them in what is called um, uh, focal points along the mech structure uh you can when you become extremely powerful do so without these focal points but they're basically uh like key points okay and you use them as kind of jump points between each part of the mech that you extend yourself through so you already have one for the cockpit and the engine uh and then you kind of extend, you connect yourself to your potentia that you've put in the cockpit, and then you extend your feeling out towards the next jump point while pushing your your consciousness through the machine. Uh, each uh, point that you add um, helps the process and speeds it up, and each point that you reinforce with more potentia makes the bond stronger. So... 
what you're going to probably currently want to do is roll me a potential test uh, with plus 30 from your logic test. Okay. Um, so when you cultivate in the cockpit of a mech that is bonded to you, yeah. uh, cultivating external potentia specifically for the mecha is at uh, basically as if you had a grandmaster assisting. That's pretty good. It's very good. It's extremely yeah. efficient, but it only works if you that potentia goes towards your mech. Right. So, um, and each uh, potentia that you do cultivate specifically, let me pull up the data dimensions. Yep. So, with the Grandmaster uh, late, uh, rate, it's 1 DT for one new specific uh, external. So, it's just one for one. So, how many downtime actions you have left? I have uh, uh, it took I have eight one total. of them to read the book. Oh, it took one of them to read the book, so I have um, seven of them. Yep, so you can get seven. Uh, cult, uh, seven potentia for the Timberwolf. Okay. Now... So, uh, there's a lot of... In, you're going to want one for each of the core parts, so one, you know, the 10 minimum except for one for the paint uh so and you don't particularly need them for externals so one for the frame okay uh cockpit engine power source uh component slot but you don't need what you can do one for each individual component but usually it's just the, the actual internal component compartment so that you can you, the, you can extend your consciousness into those parts there. Okay. Um, it's recommended you do one for each weapon system. Okay. And then it really depends on how much you want to invest in the Timberwolf. A lot of uh, pilots, since it's so easy to cultivate using the Iron Eater way, mm -hmm. um, some of them will take a week and do the bare minimum for one mech because they you know it's not going to survive combat. But if it's jacked like this thing, you could potentially supercharge this thing. Um, once you have the base down, there are going to be a lot more costly uh, uh, potential techniques. Because there is ones for helping reduce heat. Uh, there's ones for increasing the armor, increasing the speed. Uh, Increasing your peripheral awareness, ex you know, extending your consciousness through external cameras, so you have a 360 awareness at all times. All right. But basics is you build your your key points throughout the the mech so that you can jump and push your consciousness out, and then you become one with the mech. So. All right, so I got seven. I'll uh, mm -hmm. put them in the places. Do they give any bonuses when you put them in, or just like is it just like uh, more of making the foundation? Uh, you're gonna make the foundation with this. Uh, you still have a ways to go. Okay. Um, but once you do have the foundation, pushing your consciousness out uh, actually is going to be a core um, cultivation tree, and that one actually will be. Uh, not as efficient as the top one it's going to be with a cultivation manual which is three downtime actions for a new tree and then uh three additional stacking for each level and that's actually going to be uh, the core technique for pushing your uh your soul throughout the mech okay so uh you're gonna need quite a few more downtime actions to get this this thing going but you can definitely feel your connection with the machine uh, significantly increase. Uh, you can actually also feel like each individual compartment that you imbue a single potential in. So, very interesting. Okay, and after that, I'll go to bed. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys are allowed to sleep in a little bit, uh, but you are, are woken up at standard time, and you guys go work out. Uh, it's do I get downtime for sleep? Or lack uh, of sleep, I should say. Yeah, yeah, you don't sleep. That's right. You crazy, crazy man. All right. Yeah. I'm just want to. I'm going to look into that firmware update. I'm going to get it onto my server and just. It was coding tests. Uh, mm -hmm. How many degrees of success did I need to pass it? I remember the last one was. I think it was ten. So this time it should be twenty. I believe it was. Yes. All right. Um. Uh, ten of actually, half of half the total will tell you what's on it, as you have. Well, will my decoding program tell me what's on it? Um, that actually will take it uh, quite a bit of time for it to parse. It's a pretty dense code. It's a pretty dense code. Mm. Uh, it actually will take about two hours for it to analyze it fully, and actually be I'll able start... to give you definitive data. I mean, I can run that in the background while I'm doing my own work, so I'll start working on it while it's sure. decoding. Uh, oh, I need to reset my boons. Uh, I'm not going to bother with any right now for this anyway. Cool. So, five... Six... Um, since these are downtime rolls, you said there's four of them. Is that supposed to... How many... What's that actually represent time-wise spent on it? Uh, so each downtime actions, the four, that's going to be till standard bedtime. Uh, then you get another eight for not having to sleep. <laughs> so, 12 total. Oh, 12? Yeah, because you don't sleep. Okay. No, that's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Why do you think I'm trying to remove my need for sleep meditate for an hour get eight hours of sleep the problem is that's going to require me to have four in world soul and four in the other one mm -hmm. or well, he just become a robot mm -hmm. he could hook you up no, thank you robotics is the way forward and the path <laughs> um i assume by the time i've got that second roll done i probably like the decodes run done the rundown of this firmware yep. update. Uh, it's a complete overhaul of the system. It's a new version. It's not just an update. Um, you will actually uh, be disabled during the time. Like you will literally shut down. Uh, and you're going to actually need something to hold your consciousness. Um, the, the data that is you, your identity while the process is running because you actually need to be separate because uh, it's going to literally remove all of the code so, inside the, the frame and replace it with a new set so i'd have to i would have to sit inside my server then probably yeah okay uh, uh what's it actually do uh, it oh. overhauls the energy management system But it also oh. overhauls the behavioral conditioning system behind how it's operated. Yes, that's what I that's what the coding's the hack, really. Right, and that's that's what you're gonna be trying to separate. So it makes you more energy efficient and your energy management system, uh, and your energy uh, wireless connectivity ability will actually uh, increase. Uh, your fine detail will increase, your range will increase. Um, it's yeah, just a it's just a better uh system yeah. overall. Entirely. All right, that can that can be worth it. All right. Um, um, it also has a interesting uh, upgrade for the nano. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're gonna need a, a, quite a bit of it, but it actually uh, the next time you. Uh, when you do undergo this upgrade, it will use the nano in there to actually improve the durability of the frame. <laughs> well, let me roll the the rest out for the computer code on that, and then I'll just start working on my uh, yep. thing again. Yeah, so it'll actually increase, it'll almost double your armor for your machine trait. Yeah, I'm going to do batches of five until I get the degrees of success necessary. 
And once I hit that, I'll just discard whatever if I if I go over. Does that sound okay? Sure. That way I'm not filling this damn thing. Uh, let's see. That one's another five, six, six. That's should hit it. Let's see. It's a ten. Yeah, no, that uh, I hit it on. See, sure. guys, that's six, eleven, seventeen. Yeah, I hit it on the fourth roll. Cool. Uh, yeah, you've parsed the code. Um, the behavioral conditioning and uh, permissions is hideous. Um, this is a significant step in enslaving and remodifying the personality that is put into this machine. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to get rid of now, isn't it? Uh, this actually... Ben Roma coding. Because you're a chiropractor. All code has purpose. Uh, I'll slap two boons on that. Okay. No, I'll slap three boons on that to bring it up to five degrees of success, just so I've got a solid idea of what i'm dealing with okay uh you could probably repurpose some of this code from the behavioral modification into a virus program and if you were to ever infect i don't know an ai consciousness you could literally just enslave it you know matt the funny thing is that was what i was planning to make for the cerberus i was planning to make an update protocol to basically uh basically create a new version of it that way if it does a rollback to or try to to roll back to a clean version like um, later on it just rolls back to the you ba can definitely i'm trying to tell... make it a, an official okay. update basically yeah. to make uh, it you can that. definitely tell that this particular version of code the more complex the consciousness the more effective the enslavement uh, it's not polished. Probably in future firmware updates, this has becomes extremely polished, and there's not really much wiggle room. Um, but you also have to, unfortunately, come with the conundrum of that Cerberus program is going to have a consciousness level and sentience equal to the Thunderhead, because it'll probably be a final fragment of the Thunderhead you're fighting. Well, and you would be technically enslaving a Thunderhead iteration. Yeah, which technically is enslaving the Thunderhead. But it's not. It's, but it's not, but it is, but it's not. It's most certainly <laughs> not, because it's, you know, it, it's not an actual AI, necessarily. It's a virus that's gained sentience, effectively. The question is, how would the Thunderhead take it? Does the Thunderhead need to know? Well, it's not dived into your head ever. That you know of. I mean... Who knows? Whatever. Um, For now... uh, That gives me a base for the program I was going to build to do... Well, exactly this, so that'll be nice. And I can work on that while I'm separated from my, my body for that firmware update. Mm -hmm. uh, how long will that... Actually, how long will that update take to see if I need to wait until, like, tomorrow night to do it or something? Uh, it is actually going to take 36 hours. Oh, I need to... Okay, I'm not going to be able to do that firmware update anytime soon. That's um... cool. It is a huge overhaul because it actually needs to slowly purge file in a very files in a very specific order of this current system, and it needs to do it safely because otherwise it'll yeah, actually destroy it, your physical body. Yeah, I got that with the nano stuff yeah. attached to it. It makes it yeah, and then it needs that. to then build up the. That, that's yeah. cool. I understand. Um. So instead of running that, I'm just going to take that behavioral update programs and I'm going to start refining the shit out of them to hit Cerberus with. I have an example of their code from that memory unit. It's not going to be a perfect thing, but it'll help. And I'm just going to start refining this into basically obey me. Okay. Um... That's the plan. Uh, I'll do 
Let's see, so I had six rolls through. I had 12 total. So I'll do six more rolls for working on this new program. All right? Okay. And we'll figure out tiers and stuff after I've got all that done. So, and then one more. All right. Uh, we have a hefty degree of success, failure, success. Uh, everything else is successes. Okay. That's six degrees, five, four. You got a tier three, one working four. program. Okay. It works. Uh, testing shows you stick it on a basic program. Um, if it has a defense active, it doesn't do particularly well. Um, and the golden rings are literally unassailable. Uh, this program literally has no recourse against anything wielding the golden protective rings uh, that the Thunder well, assigns. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Yeah. Um, but if you can catch a program unawares, uh, this program, not particularly insidious or stealthy, but it, if it's fighting another tier one, it could, it, with the. So I'm going to do time. Yeah. I'm going to need time to upgrade it. That's cool. Uh, that's my mm -hmm. stuff, then. I'm done. Alright. Um, any last thing that I forgot before we move on to the next day? Uh, nope. Alright. Bed, bed. Well, not bed, but... Bed, bed, bed programming bed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you guys are woken up. A lot of go you guys do your little workout. Mm -hmm. uh, you were told nothing heavy. Just get your blood flowing. Um, that, you know, that wake up. Time, time to work you, on my program. You could just sit and, I don't know, do something. I'll work on my program. That'll just give me a couple more rolls. Uh, you know what? They'll have you work on marching. <laughs> I can work on my program while doing that. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, <laughs> what do you want to start for trying to go up to tier two? Let's say, uh, let's see, the tier three was nine, three to get it to tier two? Or do you want it to be more like six? Six. Six? Okay. So I'll just, let's you say one roll. Basically one downtime action. Yeah, I'll just do one roll. And All right. it passed. There we go. We're yeah, yeah. One progress out of six. <laughs> We're done. We're good. All right. Okay, so uh, you guys are going to be um, given an opportunity to go eat, but you're told to pick something quick, quick and easy. And you are brought to uh, one of the larger mech hangers. And uh, Snips. Major Snips kind of has you guys stand in attention. We're going to do some mech piloting today. Finally, we're going to get back into the cockpit and actually get to shoot the shit out of some stuff. Fortunately, we have a little bit more variety available to us today. We're going to have some moving targets that fight back. So, recruit Jackie. Uh, as an Iron Eater yourself, in gun consciousness, you have a perfectly working ground mech, uh, mech warrior in this particular case. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you, Mom. That's quite something, quite impressive what you picked up, um, especially as your first operational machine. That is. <sighs> Not something to scoff at. In fact, uh, you make quite an impression on quite a few people. Uh, normally, individuals don't actually get their hands on an actual mech warrior, let alone something of that vintage. Something that f ferocious. Like a um, fine red wine. Shush you. I'm enjoying this moment. <laughs> So you will be, for the rest of the training, and any time you think you can deploy that beast, you will. You will be not 
using any of the training mechs available, you will be using that Timberwolf from here on. Uh, here's a tablet. I'll be giving a oral explanation to the individuals here, but you are immediately dismissed to go to the Timberwolf, fire it up, and meet us outside. She'll uh, salute. Yes, Mom. Yeah. And then while uh, you're writing off. from you know, using the transport system from here to your hangar, try and peruse as much as that as you can. Uh, you'll most likely beat us outside. Just make sure you're out of the way and then continue to review the programs or the uh, the content that uh, of our deployment today. Cody, you're in the same boat. You're going to get to use the Apollo today. It's yours. We've banged that thing up pretty bad in the testing. Uh, we've put it back together. Uh, we've also ripped it apart just to kind of see how it worked on the inside. Um, the Leah has been installed courtesy of your master. I won't use the Leah here. Uh, you may actually use the Leah technology, from what I've been told. Ooh. Here are the specifications. You'll notice that there have been two additional Skillsoft programs added to the machine. One of which is proprietary uh, to the Leah program, which is the Leah Soft skill set. It mm -hmm. allows the pilot its AI assisted program to actually utilize the LIA program or the LIA technology. And then of course there is the host AI core, which specifically allows you to onboard your personalized AI instead of using the onboarded AI. Here is the data pad with the uh, details of the engagement in which we were going to do today. Go get the Apollo up and running. Meet us outside. Yes, ma'am. Okay. For the two of you, you, uh, Recruit Nix, and you, Recruit Luna, are going to be given the opportunity to pilot something we have tooled together over the last couple of days. Uh, identical, of course, but you're going to be given the Reginald. Reginald is don't think as fancy as the Apollo, which is unfortunately I will say now that he is gone an over near over engineered piece of junk. <clears throat> uh, there are a couple pieces in there that are noteworthy that we particularly think have extreme promise. But as a first attempt, it's not bad. But it is an extremely over near over engineered brittle piece of junk. But he's going to get to see why in a moment. Uh, we're going to give you something a little beefier. Something we've put together that's reliable. In fact, if I had a choice and I couldn't have that Timberwolf, I would pick a Reginald over an Apollo every time. It's just better engineered, safer, stronger. And you're actually going to get the opportunity to experience a shielded mech frame. Yes, you heard me right. This is a mech that actually has a shield module built in. Not common. Those are very expensive and very power-hungry machines. But we have threaded the needle and built something truly impressive. You will both be getting one. For our engagement. And... They will be available to you in the next hangar. So uh, under the uh, player max, I will now make the medium frame Reginald available to uh, you guys to look at. Bloop. You know, I just realized I never did check to see how functional my stealth mech was. Uh, I have it actually in the thing. Yeah, I see it in the... Uh, it is not. Yeah, I think I need to replace, as I recall, the cockpit. Mm-hmm. 
Otherwise, uh, the main nice. weapon's missing. The armor's been stripped off because you had the guy start the repair process. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, frame is damaged and bent. Yeah, actually, you know what's funny? I actually have a cockpit to replace the other cockpit with. Another manual. Yeah. Or analog. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Um... I just realized that. Whatever. Not not important right now. We can move. We, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Reginald. Ah, oh, hello. This thing's big and clumpy. Yeah, clump, clump. It's frame. Uh, you'll notice that I have re... I have built a template. Quick glance. That's basically you could just... These are the important parts of the mech that you will need to keep track of. Um, and then when it starts at medium frame Reginald for on that first dash line or the first line that goes across, that is all the individual stats of each individual piece. Okay. Um, the weapon systems on this guy is actually along with the shield compartment is what is called an iron eater special. They somehow moved enough of the parts around and perfectly engineered the frame so that there's extra space enough so that you can have a shield compartment for shields alone instead of using the main compartment space and they were able to fit a large weapon on the shoulder well which, hot damn yeah um they also put some very powerful upgrades to both the engine and the power core specifically so that it can actually power that shield in addition to everything else so uh this like this reginald this particular model with the parts on it would actually be very sought after by pretty much anyone that doesn't have a fucking timber wolf going around <laughs> but these are also space capable the reginalds okay Okay. Ugh. Yeah, let me see if I could duplicate this thing. Bloop. Where'd it go? There it is. Um. So I'm gonna have medium frame Reginald hyphen Luna, which allows you to specifically uh, mess with this particular. Um. Reginald. Uh, action and... move my token. Yeah. And then we're going to do it again. Bloop. I'm still on the missile. Yes, I know. <laughs> I am doing some stuff. Duplicate. And then... Me and frame Reginald next. I'll give you authorization for that one. And that'll be my master copy. Ha. Swoosh. Well darn. That got moved. Well, stop it, Ron. All right. Oh, somebody drew on it. You poop heads. It's Um, I do have that picture somewhere for the Timberwolf. Where did it go? 
Well, in the meantime, let us move you to the uh, base drop zone. And let us grab Uh do you want the close up picture or the, the full picture for the Apollo? Uh close up. Okay. Bloop. And since it'll be a four by four, and then you will have control. Hello, you are now in piloted mech. And then of course, snips in her extremely large. <laughs> You're tiny. You're tiny medium mech. For that particular Timberwolf picture, I'm pretty sure I have it in my giant mech catalog. I think. If not, I will crop the shit out of it. Yes. I certainly do. Because I'm amazing. Oh, yeah. Give that to good old Jackie. And then let's get our boys on the field with their Reginalds. <laughs> yeah, it's that that thing's huge. And give it to Luna. And then... Sneak, 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 sneak. Huzzah. Alright. And Snip's like, alright, you little chickadees. Let's make our way down to the shooting range. Don't you think? Ha <laughs> ha. And, uh... As you guys are making the long trek over. I suddenly have the urge to start clucking like a baby chick. You may if you so choose. It's fine. You are little babies. So, uh, Snips is in a King Crab, right? Yeah. That's an assault mech, right? That is an assault class, yes. Yeah, nice. Um... Your battle mech is hyper aware of that particular mech warrior. Uh, it, of course. If you weren't in absolute control of this thing, it would push normal mech warrior pilots in kind of a in a kind of a frenzy to challenge that guy in a one on one duel. So what if it's bigger? That. <laughs> so what if it's bigger and has four? Two huge ballistic slots and two large missile slots plus other weaponry, and has way more armor than any right it should have, and probably is also a uh, has been rekindled several times, and has a personality. We're gonna fight it because I'm the king on the block. I'm a timber wolf. But now you'll you'll be able to rein that in. Uh, Cody, mm -hmm. um, roll me mech building as you're kind of, uh, on your way to the practice field. Mm. Damn. <laughs> um, you're now understanding why they called it an over-engineered piece of crap. Mm -hmm. This thing is temperamental as shit. Um, I'm like, all right, Lexi, uh, take control for a moment. And 
and pull out a data pad and start writing. Mm -hmm. All right, make a few adjustments here, a few adjustments there. Reginald looks like it has a very, very tiny face. Yeah, it does. It's, it's kind of inset. It's got a <laughs> tiny face and a very large body. That's what happens when you take too much steroids. That's exactly what I was just thinking! <laughs> steroids, not even on. once. So everyone, I'll have you roll a pilot test. On your way there. I don't have pilot. Uh... Luna, actually, it's a lot more simple. Uh, you will have the opportunity to um, kind of learn on the way. Also, how can I just like? It's an analog. It's, it's not an analog cockpit. It is a virtual AI assisted a cockpit. So yeah, you could just kind of um, hmm. connect. <laughs> yeah, <It> makes piloting <laughs> kind of easy. And Milo will overtake the AI on board and go, Hi, I'm Milo! Uh, uh, hi, Milo. Hi, Milo. It's not safe here. No, no. We're, right where we're standing right this second is safe. Oh, it's not safe here at all. Uh, of course you're going to say that. Well, help me... Help, give me a rundown of how to run this thing, if you would. I don't know. I'm just here. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. Well, okay, if I'm melding with it like direct, Matt. Yep. Is it still pilot surface or what am I using there? Uh, it actually will be pilot surface because uh, there's a lot more than just you mentally connecting and uh, controlling the mech um, through a connection. Uh, but it's actually pretty intuitive when you know the systems from the inside. All right, so, so what, not what bad. I... What am I doing on the roll here? Uh, you're going to roll int to see if you can figure it out. And then if you pass, you'll have operate surface. And oh, Jesus. OK, um, just throw three check marks in it. You figure it out probably within the first 10 minutes. Like, oh, this is this is simple as shit. Uh, mm. with, you know, looking at the manual they gave you. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And uh, Milo is. A great There's no limit in what she can do, particularly as the onboard ally. She's just not that bright. She needs directions. You need to direct her to do something, and then sometimes she might go, I don't know if I can do that. And then you will have to manually explain, yes, you can. Here's how. That's fine. That's and then Mila will go, ah, and then do it. <laughs> That's fine. That's just, just no different from normal uh, onboard AI, just more advanced onboard AI. Uh, no, your onboard AI, you can immediately give it a verbal command, and it just does it as long as there's a uh, soft core for it, like a program built in. Oh, I am so tempted just to, like, no, I won't. I won't steal the programs. No, I resist. I resist the urge <laughs> to. I'm stealing programs. No. <laughs> Maybe uh, software, computer code. You I'm put the thing on autopilot. You're just like, hmm. You know what? I figured this, this out in 10 minutes. How long is it going to take us to get there? An hour? That's like oh, yeah. it, it's worth it. minutes. I'm, oh, it's worth it. I'm spending a boon to make that a pass with a two degrees. Um, yeah, you'll be analyzing the, uh, just look at the components. And, uh. I'm that fucking can, SpongeBob meme. For the I don't first need hour, it. you're just kind of going through what they do. That's cool. We, we we'll we'll assume that I have a rough, uh, that I'm getting a good feel for the soft cores. Yeah, yeah. So it takes you pretty much the the whole kind of right over um, to this practice field. Um. Uh, Looks like everyone passed their apparate surface test. Oh. Anyone fail? Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, 
Uh, actually, Jackie, I'll have you roll me a willpower test. Uh, oh. Your degree of success in the operate will give you a bonus. Uh, uh, so okay. 20, plus 20. Okay. Plus 20 willpower test. Nice. Right. Um, Timberwolf wants to run. It really fucking just wants to break rank and just push. Uh, but you resist the urge because you're a professional. And you kind of rein that urge in. Yeah, I'm the uh, full release. It can be uh, whatever it wants to be. So I just got to keep ahead of it. Yeah, it wants to run. Um, but you do have the full weaponized armament ready to go. And the kind of part way through, once you guys, about 30 minutes in, halfway to the, the shooting grounds, um, uh, you guys are weapons free. Just if you see something, as long as it's not anyone here, you can just fire the weapons just to kind of get the feel of it. If you have missiles oh. or... Any of that, uh, please step away from the group. Uh, especially <laughs> you and the Timberwolf, that is a lot of DACA. <laughs> especially if you fire a full salvo, uh, both pods. Make sure it's way the hell over there. Also, check your seismograph in case there's worms. Because if you fire a bunch of missiles, might let them know that there's um, <coughs> mechs on the Ooh. field. And yours particularly... Uh, they'll go after snips first, but you are second by far. I'm just gonna be uh, using the lasers. Yeah, those those kick that double double blue heavy laser on each arm. That's that's a lot of damage. Um, I'll take some test shots just to get a feel for the uh, the lasers. I'm not gonna dump missiles. Uh, actually, the, yours kicks. You got uh, those are red, uh, red lasers. So they actually can hurt something. It's not those pathetic green mush green ones. It's not those nasty blue ones coming off that timber wolf, but uh, it's not also that nasty purple one I have in storage. Yeah, that's that almost hits as hard as a medium laser. <laughs> it's a light laser. It'll be funny. Yeah. Anyway, the uh. You guys will probably fire a bunch of stuff. What about the Apollo? The Apollo only has machine guns and missiles. <laughs> uh, we're not going to let off any rockets, but we are going to test the transformative factor and see how long it takes. Uh, it takes a full action. It's a complex action. But mm -hmm. it actually is kind of cool because the legs kind of crouch down and then jump upwards because it's an Atmo. The thrusters mm -hmm. fire a couple times to get extra jump uh, uh, distance off the ground, and it goes just fucking transformer move, and then the the rocket jets kick, and you're just like, yeet. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm probably the first one to break ranks on that one. Yeah, no, that you immediately just rocket <laughs> incredibly far up in the air. Um, you reach. Probably about 2,000 meters off the ground within mm -hmm. a matter of moments because you got a double rocket jet on that thing. Yeah. And, and you just kind of hear sniffs over the comms. Well, what do you think? Uh, I love it. I can see why it's uh, been called overtuned, though. Yeah, for a pilot that type of kick that's fine like that that whole uh atmo kick sequence that you that you wrote in there that's pretty good that's some good stuff because that's that's automatic you don't actually have to pilot that you just hit a button and it does it for you um there is a manual feature which i did not engage i left it on all pilot for you um do you particularly enjoy that engine module you built? Uh, with the double, well, rocket jets, in addition to a 
Tier three. Good. As oh. Matt gets a phone call. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So everything's definitely going to go horribly wrong, right? I hope not. I would not be surprised. Right, Matt, sorry. Welcome back. Uh, yeah. The uh, yeah, mage is like it's pretty okay, but uh, if I was authorized, I'd actually fire several salvos of missiles at you, and then you would realize. How much that thing can't take a hit? If you're authorized. If I was authorized, yes. Uh, I'd be okay with missiles. I don't think that thing could survive my main arm in it. It's, it's too brittle, I'm sorry. No, that's fair. Yeah, I'm not authorized to deal anywhere near lethal harm to you. Considering your uh, qualifications for certain programs, we don't discuss. Exactly. But um, also, the armament on it is absolutely pitiful. No one would want to pilot it because, I mean, except for regs, because they don't really have a choice. And it does haul ass, I'll tell you that. But missiles and machine guns, uh, you could barely handle a fire ship, let alone any other standard infantry. Uh. But we do recommend externally mounted, one time use payloads, like most of the uh, fighters usually carry. In fact, if you were to upgrade it to potentially a heavy frame you might be able to mount upwards of four arrow missiles and uh that's what we call a real weapon because if you get hit with an arrow you explode bad i have some prototype designs i'd like to take a look at later mm. major snips but I am and have been authorized to damage the ever-living shit out of your mechs today. And it is up to you to reduce the amount of incoming damage you take. Exciting. So. Yes, indeed. That's the reason why we gave you shield modules. So, for the first exercise, um, Cody, if you can touch back down safely. Yeah, we'll go into landing. Yeah. It's not too bad. No, autopilot works just fine. Gyroscope works just fine. But all the complaints come from after damage has been taken, problems. Yeah. Before damage has been taken, runs just fine. <laughs> Clearly, they don't understand the answer to this problem, which is don't get hit. Right. Um, there have been a delivery of old ordnance and old machinery. The Mickey, unfortunately, is a machine that has seen combat since the beginning of the war. It is an ancient design, and it's been used pretty efficiently even though it has the highest casualty rate for any frame uh available on the market 
Uh, a lot of the older models are sent for decommissioning. Uh, as in practice dummies. So your job is to shoot the shit out of these things. Some of them will fight back, but you don't know which ones. And yes, they will shoot at you. Uh, you can engage each of them how you please. Uh, there is going to be a full set of Mickeys for each of you. And then we're going to get into something spicy afterwards. Once you got your... Uh, once you got your... Uh, mech legs underneath us? Yeah, your mech legs underneath you. So, let's see. Um, Nix, you'll be one. Luna, you'll be two. Apollo is three. Timberwolf, four. Guess what? Luna, you're first. Woohoo! Excitement <laughs> bound. Uh, the objective. Disable all Mickeys as fast as possible. All right, first things first, Matt. Yep. I'm going to see if any of them are remote active. Uh, There are two. Cool. Uh, one behind the water truck. Mm -hmm. And one behind the orange crate. Cool. I'm going to crack those two first and foremost before I do anything else. Um... Because there's not a lot of easy cover to be found, especially you since you do have a shield. Medium. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, that's what I was thinking. Is I'm gonna have to rely on my shield unit because. Are you gonna not... prevent them from firing at you? Oh no! I was gonna crack them and have them fire on their allies. Uh, they will, and Snips will be like, "Hey." Mm-hmm. Stay out of their systems. They're supposed to shoot at you because that's real life experience. Yeah, so is an ECM specialist cracking your system. Do the exercise as you're told to do it. Smart yes, ass. Or would you like to go toe to toe with something that actually will fight back? Understood, ma'am. Mm hmm. I know, which, I know you can crack these things. There's literally no defense on them. Yeah, we didn't put a lot of effort into something that's meant to be shot to pieces. I presume that was part of the entire thing, but apparently not. I'm I not going to be it. testing you on your ECM abilities, because I am not qualified to do so. Well, I more assumed it was for creativity as she's moving her unit over here to... Oh. Put some holes in this guy here. Okay. Boy. He does have full cover. All right. Uh, so what will this is going to be a kind of a little experience because the others have played a little bit of Mech Warrior. Um, well, I've with the new system. Oh, I've done the new system that you. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you have your normal turn mm -hmm. um, that you can do. So you normal turn economy of two half actions, bonus action, free action, reaction, uh, and reaction is equal to your mecha. So, um, weapon grouping does need to be done as a bonus action. Because if you do not weapon group, it requires a half action to fire one single gun. Because okay. you have to toggle. Now, if you weapon group, all of the group weapons can be fired with a single roll at the same target. Your yeah. AI, on the other hand, has uh, specific actions separate from yours, which is why a virtual assisted AI is kind of the it's desired over the analog cockpit because you could fire a weapon group and move, and it also can move you another um, if it has the right. Uh, programs, or it can fire weapons on, in your stead. So, cool. 
Milo's going to have, because Milo's extremely advanced, uh, her own ex full turn economy. So Milo can also move the mech, uh, fire uh, the systems, or use any of the components, uh, if you so wish. So basically, you have two turns. But, well, Milo's also oh, not you, yeah, and she's not exactly the smartest. Okay, I'm going to fire on this guy here. Uh, he is standing still. He's not gonna actually go to dodge. Does that is that a free hit then? Or? Uh, range. Well, you still have to roll the ballistic skill test. Okay, that's that's kind of what I was, you know. Okay, uh, there we... is no range bonus or modifier. Uh, it all comes down to the targeting system to assist. So some of these have like range. Like, if I go with a light laser there, it has, like, range 8. How does that... How does 8 that squares. Up? 8 squares? Okay, so I need to get closer. Okay. Um, you also have... Um, in the Reginald... Your movement per half action is 10 squares. No, oh, if we have me as like that... Hmm... So you started back here. Yeah, let's say, well, let's reset me then. Hold on. So it's 10 squares for mm -hmm. a move? Squares 10 meters. Yep. So. Well. Yeah, so. It's like there. Yep. From like the front of the mech. Yes. Okay, um, boo. That is the wrong thing. Do I have anything I can actually hit out this way other than the LMG or LMRM? Yeah, well, the LRM can target these guys, yeah. Well, it's at a range of 18. These are way outside of 18. Uh, I'll probably have to increase their range because they do have. Yeah, it would just be this. No, there should be a thousand. Yeah, there should yeah. be. Well, I don't. I, well, I'm just saying what's written down on the thing is you have it. You have uh, it. well, uh, for the other rounds, I will modify that. Um, they will have basically 100 squares range. Okay. Okay. Um, boop, so, boop. thousand meters. I'm going to bombard this guy with some LRMs then. Okay. Uh, just a ballistic skill and then the... Uh, or you can use uh, your per your awareness for a... Uh, no, a perception for lock-on. Uh, unless that's a free action, I'm not going to. If it's flat perception. or uh, You can have Milo do it. That's the, you have a. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll have Milo do the lock on for me. I'll I'll, I'll give yeah. her. Uh, a quick, sorry, I yeah. rolled on the GM, but I rolled a twenty. Milo's like, oh yeah, yeah. and you you immediately have a lock on. And I'll just unload some missiles on that yeah. motherfucker. And go ahead and roll damage. Ten d six. You could, yeah, copy paste it with a forward slash R in front of it. I typed it up as fast as I could have done it otherwise. Oh, but it's got a plus to it, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Okay, that's it. Yeah, uh, you take it down instantly. This thing does not have the armor. Uh, it does not have 36 armor. <laughs> Just completely comes to pieces. Cool. I still, I don't think I have anything else that's in range, so... Yeah, because the next and closest hits here. Yeah. Um, you have another half action for you, and then Milo also has another half action. Yeah, I was looking at how many actions and stuff. All right. Yeah, I'm just gonna move up to. Here, 
Everything's still way out of range. Uh, I'll have her move me up another 10. Which... Done. Alright. Uh... Not much else I can do. Yeah, you go again. One oh, turn. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to hit that over here. I'm just going to have to. But hey, I now know which two apparently can fire, since they're the remote active ones. Are we allowed to preset weapon groups? Sure. Uh, you can have weapon groups up to your intelligence bonus. Preset. Okay. Cool. Um, hey, I can actually shoot somebody now. I believe that is range for my medium, but not my light. Oh no, that's my large. I'll be able to hit that. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll just shoot it with my large laser. Let's see, it's a plus 20 with the targeting system. Okay. So I'll just shoot it with the large laser. Okay. That is a miss. Hmm. Yeah, just shring! It's standing still. How does this happen? I mean, <laughs> I haven't had to shoot things before. Okay. Um, I'll just move over to here. Cool. And, well, really, can I just kind of do things until something shoots back at me? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just to save some time, because... I'm going to do, to do, that has three heat, my heat block is 20, okay. Um, I'm going to link up the, uh, the two lights and then the medium and the large lasers to have two weapon groups and then leave the missiles on their own. Okay. And then, do, 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 do. That's a plus 20. Um, as a rule, um, you can only fire one uh, a weapon once per turn. Okay. And that includes the AI as well. So if you've already fired it, the AI can't fire the same weapon in the same turn. That That's cool. I was. It's just that if this isn't firing back, I'm just, you know, at yeah. that point, shooting at dummies. Uh, you can also and, uh, run into these if you'd like. Well, you have a I was shield. about to say, I was about to say, she's rather annoyed that she can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn, so she's just gonna walk up and try to kick this thing. Okay, make me a melee attack. Uh, it is not moving. I'll give you a plus forty. Okay. Does the targeting system kick in? Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, I can actually kick it. Yeah, uh, the there's the lack of armor on this thing, and the fact that you're kicking with a Reginald, who's a medium, which is a tonnage higher. Uh, yeah, this thing is just just kick it and kind of breaks into pieces and falls over as you remove the majority of its armor on the chest. Grumble, grumble, grumble. This was the other one that could actually shoot, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna lock on. On my next turn, I'm just going to have uh, Milo gonna lock you. on. Does Fires in your direction. Cool. I'll have Milo lock on, and I'm just going to drop some missiles on it. It's like, okay, I, I seize it. Uh, do you have... Reginald. 
Oh, it's a two turn. Okay, it's not bad. Yeah, it's been a couple turns since I fired it. Since yep. I fired that on my first turn. I was paying attention. Yeah, this destroys the shit out of it. Cool. Things do not have a lot of protection. And then... I guess I'll march over here. Uh... I will end turn to see if anything shoots at me, but if not, I'm just going to just start hitting dummies. Okay. Uh, uh, is anything else shooting at me? No. Cool. I'm going to try to shoot this thing at effectively point-blank range. You will get a plus 10. Because apparently that's what it takes to actually hit something, apparently. Yes, it does. Go ahead and roll me that uh, sweet, sweet damage. Yeah, I'm using the large laser again because I'm an asshole. And then I had that attached to the... Oh, I'll, I'll roll the medium laser separately. Yeah, that'll well, kill... That's, that... that's, actually, that's probably dead, isn't it? Yeah, it's. you cut a lance through it. Let's see, he builds up to that one right now. Um, I'm going to bleed off some heat for a turn. And... Start marching my ass over here. I'll tell Milo to keep an eye on the two behind me to make sure they don't fire. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to kick this one, Matt. Just, okay. Just, just, stomp, just stomps up and just, just still, still target. Matt? Uh, yeah. Same bonuses then. Got it. I kick it. I kick you. Yeah, destroyed. Yeah. Mm, let's see. To save everybody some time, Matt, sure. are there more that can shoot? No. Then can we just call that good that I've eventually killed them all because they're not doing anything? I think it's all about like uh, how many turns it takes. It's almost like uh, for each person right. who can do it faster. I guess. I just um, didn't really It's wanna... also less about um, how long it takes. Because everyone's going to get their, their turn to do it. it re the re it resets for each person. It's about familiarizing yourself with the system. Yeah, I, I understand that. I just didn't want to take up everybody's time hitting no. non-moving targets for however long it takes me to hit things with a really, really shitty ballistic skill. Actually, it's not even that shitty. I'm just, like, rolling in the 80s. In hey, 90s. that's how I felt yesterday, dude. Hey man, it's life. The majority of my rolls. It's 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 life. It's it's life. So um Milo's gonna go you know you can just no override doubt. the targeting system and use the energy lock on. The what lock on? Your your energy the, the way we're communicating the energy control please demonstrate um so energy uh, each of these does have an energy signature because they had to walk these out so they have a base power core but it's, it's the worst you can get uh Milo actually fixates on the power core energy signature overrides all of the software in a mm -hmm. single just moment and your whole the, the, the whole frame realigns and the gun readjusts um it is the equivalency of running a uh, Star Prodigy 2 system with a plus 50. What's the dangers of running this, though? Uh, you override a lot of the security because you just cut right through the firewall. You cut right through... Uh, it opens well, me up to, EC, to electronic assault. Yeah, it, it makes you more vulnerable. 
just to completely override Whoa. the defense systems. And f basically, you're forcing the mech to go re-angle itself just so using an outside program. I'm just going to blow these two away real quick uh, just to experiment with it. I'm going to be like, interesting design. Very, very interesting. Yes, she's. I, I just use the the medium and heavy laser on these two. I don't. They don't have the health to survive that. Yeah. Uh, you can add a maneuver to your skill set. Uh, it's called risky shooting. Okay. Um. If you already have a start prodigy or better system, um. It does give you additional bonuses. You can get up to a pretty ridiculous amount. Because um, what this does is it gives a plus 30 in addition to whatever targeting system you're using. So if you have a Star Prodigy that gives you a plus 50 or a Clanner targeting system, you'll have a plus 80 if you use Risky Shooting. Uh, it does um, give the... Uh, individuals who try to use EWS on you, which is electronic warfare system, uh, mm -hmm. a plus 30. So just a trait. Okay. But if no one's using EWS, it's to, you can just use it all the time. So what was the bonus to the clan ones? It was plus... The clan ones is a plus 50. Because there's this top tier. Uh, you have a plus 20. Well, I meant uh, with the override. Uh, it's a plus 30 to to all ballistic and melee skills. Ah, I see. So it's a plus 30 on top of the targeting system. Yes. Okay. And then yeah, a plus a... 50 to clan, and then a plus what to the star or whatever? No, it's just a plus 30 on top of any targeting system. That's it. That's all it does. Okay. Um, and you can ask... Uh, if a mech is running really hot, uh, you can ask me at any point saying, hey, I, I literally can't miss that. Like, it could be off of my screen, and I am entirely aware of its existence based off of my energy transfer. Can I get additional bonus to hit it and, and additional bonus to lock onto it using the risky targeting? Or the risky shooting maneuver, and I yeah. probably, I can give you additional stacking bonuses just by how hot certain mechs run. Uh, but it's base plus thirty, which is pretty big. Cool, got that written down. Um, she's just going to kick and just kind of stompy back her way through the last of these. Just having fun kicking it. Yeah, it's it's pretty amusing to kick them. Okay, uh, go ahead and add five to your weapon skull. Oh, nice. Yeah, you go around just fucking Spartan kick all these poor Mickeys. <laughs> She's like, you see, hitting things, hitting things is so satisfying. Yeah. So it's going around and kicking each of them, it takes you about 11 turns total Yeah. for your, your whole thing, and then an extra turn to get back. And, oh. um,. Um. From the side, there is a. Uh, uh, the Mickeys are actually left where they're the, the fallen ones. And then new ones are marched out from containers. <laughs> the fallen are left where they uh, lie. Yep. Poor sons of bitches. Yeah. All right. Let's see which one of you is next. So. Next, your one, Cody's two, and oh, Cody. You reroll well, since Cody's not here yet. <gasps> next, 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 next. So Nix will step out, position himself in the middle as before. Uh, you you start. Uh, yeah. It, okay. So then, you've already. Then I guess the first round is. Yeah. Just. Full tilt running forward. Mm -hmm. um, bonus action. Uh, fucking. Yeah, he'll lock onto this one just because. Behind a container. Scanners don't care. Okay. Visual does. Yeah, visual. But... Yeah, scanners. 
Go ahead and roll me that perception. Uh. Oh, of course. No. No, wait, I get a plus 20. No, Was still it? would have failed. By one. <laughs> Goddamn. Damn rust. Yup. Still getting right, used it's... to this thing. It's training, uh, so it doesn't really matter if we fucking miss. Yep. So, uh, lock on. If you fail lock on, it doesn't actually fire the missiles. It just mm. you just need to reach lock on. Okay. Uh, turn two. Let's see here. Okay. He's going to move up over here. And let's see here. Do I have what are the range of my weapons? 16 and 12, 18. Um, dear God. Yeah, he's just going to have to double move again because I didn't get a start up front like somebody. Uh, all right, you're in the thick of it now. Um, yep. all three of these are gonna shoot at you. You have entered the ambush zone. Yep. Pew. Uh, one will shoot you with four green light lasers. He will attempt to dodge. Do it. Uh, he has got one single degree of success. Does he actually hit then with the penalties from me running? Yes. That's what he has one degree ah. of success. Okay. Um I don't have any bonuses to dodge in this thing, so just a normal dodge. Are you kidding? I am gonna shoot you with some green light lasers. You don't understand. I'm gonna get you. It's going to be good. All right. Are you ready? I don't think you're ready for this type of damage. Mm-hmm. Um, since it oh, is a quad length. That. Oh, yes. 14 damage to your shield. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, your shield regenerates every ten seconds. Yep. So Back to full of each turn. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Bunch of green uh, lasers just fire off everywhere. Bunch go wild as their targeting soft is like, well, he was there. Why is he there? <laughs> uh, right. The only reason the guy in the head of you shot you is because you were running straight at it. It's like, aha! Even if I predicted you back there, you walked into my bullets. You fool! Yep. Um. Yeah, I'm going to move my initial move over to here. And I'm going to have my AI try and lock on to this guy as I fire at this guy. Actually, no, I'll have him try and lock on to down here. To okay. that guy. There is. Uh, a lock on is a half action, but you can also relegate that to your virtual assistant AI. That's exactly what I said I was doing. I'm going to have my AI try to lock on. No. Yeah. It's a dummy. Uh, but I will be firing at this guy with my bonuses to hit. Here's hoping. Do it. Uh, where's the... So... It's not dodging. You hit. 
So I assume it's going to die as it's getting hit with a medium and large laser. As I have them weapon grouped to be. Ah, uh, you, you weapon grouped the uh, medium and larges as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah. For all damage, he's ain't you can get out of the way. Uh... It does rotate its hips at you, like, oh, it's moving this way. Ha ha. Those are the me oh there's the large. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very dead. <laughs> you saw that thing into into chunks with that 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 heavy laser. Um and you basically melt the entirety of the breastplate off. It's uh it is slag particles and it yep. hisses and fizzles against the uh rust of the of the planet as it falls to the ground mm -hmm. is very destroyed my bonus action is going to be attempt to lock onto that same fucker myself okay uh it's perception test oh yeah no it's just fire that salvo give me the damage show me the damage do it uh um, it's actually a base perception test not an awareness but it's still a lock on Give me the damage. It's the one below you, right? This one? Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. Because it was another one of the ones firing at me. Yeah, just utterly explodiated. Yeah, right. utterly explodiated. And it's this one was firing at me as well, correct? It, it did, yeah. That was right. the one that hit you. Did any of the others fire at me? Uh, This one did, and that one did, yeah. Okay. All three of these did. Those two missed because their targeting yep. soft is horrendous. Yep. Uh, yep. This one hit you solely because you were charging straight at it. Yep. Fair enough. But that's turn three. Okay. Duel with the hurts. Um, going to. Let's see here. I'm just going to fire at this guy with my medium and large. And this guy with my two lights. Cool. So. Miss with the lights. Wow. Just makes it difficult, man. Yup. It's okay. You just are doing the same showing I did. There's um, a reason I just started kicking them. I assume this one's going to fire at me then? Or... Yeah, he's gonna... Miss? Horribly. You're basically kind of... You, you've kind of curved your movement. Mm -hmm. And it goes... You are here! And it fires so wildly off to your right <laughs> that you're like... Where... I'm kind of a big target. Where are you? Sh where, where do you think I am? Uh, mm -hmm. The whole t like the, the orientation of the mech with its torso weapons is so wildly off to where you are. You know, you, the best guess you have is the rust particles in the air are messing with its crappy detection system. <laughs> that it, it, it's chasing your the phantom of where you were multiple seconds ago, and it's like. Huh. That basket might hit the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> it's just going to be to step up and drop kick that fucker. Uh, and, yeah. And try it to is fire not my going to this guy. move or dodge. Uh, it'll give you the same bonus, the plus 40 bonus, to the melee test. Are you drop kicking or are you just Spartan kicking? Just Spartan kicking. Okay, because if you drop kick, we're going to do some fun rolls. <laughs> Uh, it's that that thing is utterly just broken to pieces. Just, it's really satisfying. Now you know why Luna ran up. And yeah. You can feel 
a satisfying crunch from the foot all the way up to the cockpit. And that one gets lasered. Uh, roll damage. Oh, gosh. It's wounded. Oh no, now it's super dead. You <laughs> murdered the fuck out of that. Um, you do hear over the comms. A's candidate Nick's Banshee. Prepare for artillery bombardment. I suggest you keep light on your toes. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I'm in a medium sized mech, right? Mm -hmm. he is going to pick up the car beside him yep. and start moving because he's going to huck the car at the incoming fire. <laughs> uh, that will be a not a direct hit, but it'll be a near hit. Uh, obviously going to attempt to dodge. Okay. I'll give that a reroll. Sure. sure. Are you kidding? Okay. Would this qualify uh, hey, as an Matt. important moment? Wait, hey, Matt, can I throw him a boon? No. Oh, look at him. You need to build a power. Would this qualify as an important moment for me because she specifically referenced Ace Candidacy? Yes, she did. And yes, then, it is, if that's what you want to use. Yeah. Then I will use one of my other free rerolls. Okay. Yeah, you kind of scooch out of the way of the shrapnelized blast that will come your way. Okay. He's with Good movements. Lower. Ace candidate. There will be more. Just make sure to keep in mind these guys haven't fired at him. There should be another one that's going to fire. So his next move is going to be heading down this way. Yep. Dud, 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 dud. Uh, this individual will actually open up with uh, an SRM-4. And this is so off to the left that it's actually... Hold on, let me... Oh, uh, it actually will hit his ally. <laughs> <laughs> Which also comes to pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I have done well. I have hit my target, as you can see. It has fallen in battle. <laughs> yep, he's just going to run up and kick it. All right. That's a hurry. I assume it's dead. Did we lose a blat? Uh, yeah. Now you kick the shit oh. out of it. Dead. Okay. Right. That's my turn. Nothing okay. else is within range. Artillery. Hey, missus. It's gonna move. You know on. the fun part about old ammunition, Ace Cannon and Nix. We have a lot of old, ancient ammunition, especially if it's uh, meant for atmospheric use. Mm -hmm. A lot of rounds that need to be disposed of. In a general direction that may or may not involve you in the usual vicinity. In fact, there may be duds. Who knows? But those could be just as deadly. Yep, he he's just going to keep moving. Uh, 
All right. Uh, yeah. Keep moving. Do it. Keep moving. He is going to double move over here to Spartan kick that fucker. Okay. <laughs> Pew! Ooh. Yep. Uh, awareness check to see if any of the rest of these are moving. Or. Uh, do I need to finish up? I'm asking, you know what I mean? You do need. Uh, you can have your targets off. Shoot this. Yeah. I. I, I... I wasn't nope. sure because it wasn't within the 18 inch or 18 square range. Oh, no, then it cannot target. Yeah. Um, you can have it attempt to lock on. Yeah. It will lock on. Yeah. No. Yeah. And uh, your next turn, you can just hit the click button and then just fire the LRMs. Yep. Roll damage for the LRMs. As you begin yeah. your move... Upwards. It is dead. It is very dead. Uh, hey, it's candidate. Control shows me that uh, they have quite a few shells ready and loaded to go. In fact, um, the artillery division has gotten... It, it took them a while to get everything deployed since the weapon systems are so ancient but um we've got quite a few now up and running um uh, brace yourself do i uh, need to roll a dodge for this th four near hits two direct hits so i will be trying to dodge the direct hits obviously start with them Nice. And I've still got two more reactions, so I will try and dodge two of the near hits. Okay. Um, do my personal reactions add to the reactions no. of my mech? No. Do not. No. It's up to the it's up to the machine's capabilities. If it gotcha, was an gotcha. ace, absolutely it would. You get the reactions of not only the pilot but the mecha as well and the action economy of the pilot in addition to the action economy of the mecha well that's three near hits on me in the hills oh <laughs> uh. all right uh three near hits I will combine them all into one single roll. Uh, that is how much is shaved off of your shield. Okay. Which refreshes in 10 seconds, so. Yep. Not so bad. Just going to keep running. He's got to get up to the remaining. Oh, good. Use of that shield. Ace potential nix. But uh, it looks like they're... Um, individuals using the, those poor archaic artillery pieces targeting soft system those were iron sighted shots uh, it looks like they got the targeting systems up and running this is like more fun that way i'm glad you think so i'm waiting for the next artillery barrage because that was my turn running oh, sorry. uh here Oh, uh, direct hit, direct hit, near hit, near hit, direct cockpit hit. Trying to dodge. First, we'll start with the cockpit hit. Remember, shield always gets hit first, so. I will re-roll that one, because I still have one more for your roll. Can 
Can I get a luck check on that? What? Uh, no, that's that's gonna hit the ship. Uh, got then, another right. direct hit, two yep. direct hits. <laughs> nice, nice. And one of the near hits. <sighs> of course. Okay. So the near uh, hit and the direct hit to the cockpit both tag me. Uh, well. If it doesn't bypass your shield, it's just a shield hit. Yeah. So, uh, a direct hit does a lot more damage. 20 yeah. shield damage. And then you've got one, two, three um, near you hits in addition. You said so, two near hits. Uh, those 40s. One... Yeah, one, two, three, 46, 49, 47. Those are all near hits. The 30, 11, and the 8 are direct hits. Correct. These, so you're, these you're missiles hit with six. or anything? Hmm? Are these missiles? No, these are ballistic shells. Explosive artillery shells. Okay. Um. Uh. You will take. Two points of armor. Two points of armor damage off your uh, torso. Yep. Okay. Cody's uh, going next. He is going to run up over here to Spartan kick that fucker and laser this fucker. Spartan kick. Kasploosh! Laser. Oh, come on. And bonus action, I'll attempt to lock on to tag him with the missiles. Go for it. Actually, that'll be the... Nope. Because remember, you, gotta, you have a specific amount of turn... Action economy because you ran up and kicked. That's basically your turn economy, and now you have to rely on your uh, virtual mm. assisted AI and its turn economy. Um, direct hit, near hit, near hit, near hit, near hit. Oh, that's that's gonna be a lot of damage. Uh, so you got one, two, three. Direct hits, Six, one, seven. two, three. Uh, four direct hits, three near hits. They're getting good. Are they not getting any penalties for me sprinting my way across the battlefield? Oh, they're using a targeting system. So, no. That has never worked like that before. But fine. Uh, they're also using telemetry off of Snips's... Uh, Still, even targeting softs have had problems the faster a mech is moving. They're using quantity of fire in a grouping of kind of predicting where you're going depending on what targets you have left. And I'll re-roll for the one failed direct hit. Well, at least I dodged the direct hits. Doesn't even go through. You get out of the way of most of the damage. Mm -hmm. uh, bonus action to try and lock on myself to this guy. Sure. Uh, cool. So and the AI, AI will can fire blast for you. it. Go ahead and <clears throat> just roll damage. Your AI will just literally click the trigger for you. Oh, yeah. It's annihilated. And he'll start... I'm going to fire my main, one of my main guns at you. I'm going to let you know that I'm going to do so. So keep on your toes upon your approach. 
Prepare to dodge. Oh joy. And uh, snips one of the the crab claws will open up, and a big AC twenty will open, and a goal go conk, and you will be fired upon with. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Uh, that's a that's a big that's a big nasty hit. I'm going to attempt to dodge, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get out of the way. Just like, oh, that's a bug shell. Yep. And, Nicely done. And keeps running. And uh, as you are running in, uh, they do stop the artillery barrage because they don't want to hit other people. Yep, he's just going to run back to his position in the line. Challenge enough for you, Ace, Ace uh, Initiate. Next banshee. He's like, it was a workout. I enjoyed it. Good. Because that's about as, as easy as I can make it. I figured. This is what we call a minimal budget exercise. And I do mean minimal budget. When you get to some of the ACE training uh, facilities, it puts what we have available to shame because it's funded by the Thunderhead. And each of those would be fully equipped equivalent of Reginalds that you are piloting now with an exceptional drone cockpit. And it would be a slugfest. Each one of those Mickeys would be replaced with what you're piloting now with that heavy shield, and you would need to put them down. Like you just did. But they would be moving, fighting, kicking, oh, using everything at their disposal, and working as a team to take you down. But you're an ace. And honestly, you would make short work of them. That is the hope. I will be an ace. So, who's next? Cody is. Uh, I am. Yes, Cody. Oh, well, Cody, you were uh, you were supposed yeah. to go. So, but you were AFK. Ah. Yeah, that's right. Alrighty, let's do this. Huh, Cody, you by far have, unfortunately, the poorest uh, weapon system groupings to your frame. But that doesn't mean you can't go around just kicking everything like the others have done. Yep. And yes, you have been authorized to suffer harm to the mech. Although, I recommend that you keep your damage to a minimum. The others have shields and a decent armor package. The Temper Wolf is nigh indestructible by normal armaments. Uh, and you are a brittle uh, tin can. In comparison. Always a bastion of insight, Major. I like things that can grin in the face of utter annihilation and destruction and have a actual chance of winning. That is fair, Major. Because it can take a hit when you have no other choice. That's why I never went to the ACE program. They dance around in little uh, highly, uh, highly and overtuned machines that if unfortunately something happens their fancy fancy parts break oh by the way Nyx mm -hmm. uh, uh, I forgot to give you your training bonuses because uh, they pushed you oh did they push yeah, you yeah that, that was some hard uh, go ahead and add the fourth check mark of dodge my friend 
for freezies. Uh, I'm gonna fucking need it. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's what you get, because that's a uh, it's a fourth check mark. That's that's the that's the sauce. Yep. All right, and, all right, uh, all right. You uh, you dance like a fairy. You took only two damage to the armor. Well, that's mm-hmm. okay. That that you got artillery shot at you. Yep. A lot. And an AC twenty. Yeah. Does it does a ridiculous amount of damage? I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see. Um, let's. Uh, actually, it's not too bad. But the auto cannon twenty that I have in the known weapons is actually an AC twenty burst fire. Not the actual solid slug, which I actually need to stat out because uh, it basically compacts 10 hits of the auto cannon burst fire into a single shot, which would make it far more devastating. Oh, that's a. Hmm. Well, if I did the, ca- the calculation right, it would be. Uh, 20d6, AD60. I don't think that's a little overkill, so I might have to tune that if I were to do the multiplicative right. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have to. It's basically by like getting hit with a Gauss rifle. So uh, I'd probably make it similar to the Gauss rifle damage, which unfortunately actually wouldn't kill you because of the shield. My 45 shield would uh, definitely save your life. But the mech would not be happy. <laughs> it's still a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, friendos. Um, hmm. Cody, what you got for me, Holmes? Alright, uh, so we're gonna start with a very fast move. Uh, so... Was it me? Uh, if you use your rocket jets, there. If you move in a straight line, there is nowhere on this map you can't reach in a single half action. Yeah. Because uh, so... rocket dual rocket jets. That's that's so fast. So fucking fast. Yeah. So we're just gonna come like here. Um. And we're gonna have Lexi with. Uh, lock onto that one, and we spend another half action to lock onto this one. <clears throat> uh, so uh, also as a note, uh, the only ones that are uh, paired are the machine guns. Yeah. Fire away. Uh, oh, I'm not firing. Uh, I'm doing lock-ons right now. Well, then, then do some lock-ons, Holmes. Yeah. Which one gets the missiles? Right in front of uh, you? That one does. Okay. Roll damage. Oh, yeah. It's... Uh, the one in front of you, um, you move fast. Let's see if it actually can hit you. <gasps> oh, it will. Roll me that dodge, yeah. bro. That uh, it is at a minus fifty. Yeah. Hit. Yes. That's it. It it just, it had to roll a single digit to hit you. Yeah. Uh, uh... But it has succeeded. Oh. oh. We're going to go like that. Yeah. <gasps> oh! <Yay! laughs> uh, we're going to have some stuff happen, my friend. Yeah. All right. First off, take 10 damage. To my... Uh, uh, oh, a 9 left, is... That's your leg. Okay. You're going you're gonna to get hit in the leg. Honestly. Um, let's... Uh... It is the 
left leg, like I called, I called it. Uh, it does not. Ten damage is not enough, but it does do four armor damage. Mm -hmm. And the cockpit screams at you. Uh, you have taken damage. Um, it throws off your trajectory. Uh, do you want to stick with with 100 and see what happens? Yeah, you know what? We're going to stick with 100 and see what happens. Uh, I will in collide into that mecha that shot you. It throws mm -hmm. you off trajectory. You are not able to stop. Uh, the gyroscope malfunctions like they said in the... Um, even though you got shot in the leg the whole mecha suffers and you will yeah. directly collide unfortunately with that mech so oh. this will be to the torso but mm -hmm. you will suffer 41 direct impact damage to the torso oh okay Uh, yeah. Since you have built a ejection system, a robust one, mm -hmm. uh, if it does exceed the durability damage, you will eject. Yeah. Safely. But that that the Apollo is going to be totaled. <laughs> <laughs> it's like totaling a Ferrari. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you just um... fucking flip it and crash into a light post <laughs> or a telephone post. I have a question. Oh, geez. Do I take out the mech, though? Oh, it's that 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 is cr just pieces, absolute <laughs> pieces across the rust dunes. Uh, so, what does what does that look like for your poor Apollo? Because I don't, you uh, never had a lot my, of armor on this poor thing. My Apollo is still standing with four at the torso. Is that for durability or for armor? For armor. Okay, you get <laughs> up and. Massive chunks of plate fall to the ground. We're good. <laughs> We're good. We are good. Um, are uh, you sure about that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so much armor damage. Just going to, uh, just going to look at the major and be like, remind me to never get in one of those. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, Cody, uh, yeah. the gyroscope has malfunctioned, and it is a fixed position. You are upside down, left up. Okay. Uh, mm. It is a minus 30 to do anything. <laughs> you are literally... The, the, the straps are holding you in place, because uh, if you let go, you would fall on your neck at an angle and break your neck on the cockpit. Mm -hmm. If you're the, the, the harness were to be undone, and you didn't have a means to stop yourself from falling yeah yeah so this is this is exactly everything that you've read about your machine <laughs> uh, gyroscope has malfunctioned uh you know for certain if you transform it will not complete and you will be uh, the whole frame will jam up right um you have bent the barrels of both your machine guns and you're not sure of the durability of the missile pods. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a. But you can kick these things. You're pretty I certain. Can. At a minus thirty. It's like. The... Yeah. <laughs> right, a minus thirty with a plus thirty. Yeah. Just well, it's a, a plus forty to hit. So it's a plus ten yeah. overall. It's like, whoa. Uh, uh... Also... Well, no, because I also have an additional plus ten. Yeah. There you uh, go. Uh, I'm gonna have so for Lexi's half action, I'm gonna have run a quick diagnostics. Okay. Um. Oh God. Uh. How to deal with that hundred? Um. I wouldn't have a way to re, at least, uh. Uh, you have Put built the in the hybrid gyroscope, gyroscope a release system. It basically, yeah. if you hit the release system, it no longer proactively um, uh, gyroscopes you. It actually will 
forcibly reset it into a normal cockpit position, but it locks it in place. Right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and force the reset. Yep. And you start shifting. And you hear grinding of stuff. You're like, Ugh, no, my baby. <laughs> and you uh-huh. hear it click into place, and you hear a bolt uh, All right. lock itself so that it can't spin anymore. All right. Have you're up right. So <laughs> right. you can remove that minus 30. Uh, and then I'm going to have... Uh, Lexi do a log on here. And then we're just gonna shoot the second missile pod at it. Find out whether or not the missile pods work. So, uh, did we figure out if the missile pods work? Well, we're finding out now, and I'm going to laugh <laughs> yeah. if he blows his entire torso all in half. Uh, I will use a spend a boon here. Can I say why not for two degrees of success? I feel like that ninety-seven has something to do with those missile pods. I feel like it too. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, uh, uh, you will be able to pass enough of a diagnostic that an awareness mm-hmm. of your general machine that the uh, the missiles don't explode, but both pods have jammed. Okay. You have melee abilities. That's about it. Okay. Um, uh, that that you mm, <laughs> yeah, getting right. that mech in such a collision has uh, it's such a finely tuned machine. That impact, unfortunately, it's not your 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 machine's not built for durability. Yeah. So it is misaligned everything. As you have uh, nearly bent your frame around the Mickey. Yeah. Man, first test was a hundred. Um what kind of weapon does this have? Just out of curiosity. Uh four light lasers. You know what? We're gonna pick one. Well, you know we can't. Uh, all right. So you know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna be charging this. Just, meh. Just kick him. Just, just, just kick right. him. Uh, so charging gives me a plus twenty, or a plus thirty, forty. It's plus thirty for a charge bonus, but you don't get the standard attack bonus that way. Right. No, I was just wondering. How much it was it was a plus thirty. That's all I needed it. Yeah, that's basically uh, standard dark heresy anyway. So GM, uh, was there any bonus? Is there any bonus to charging? That <clears throat> any bonus to, to what again? Is there a bonus to charging? Plus twenty. Okay, so plus twenty, forty, fifty. Oh yeah! Kabam! You kick it and satisfact like such satisfaction, mm-hmm. but also a twang in your heart because it's a mech. You yeah. kick it into itty bitty pieces. But also, your mech's almost an itty bitty pieces. So yeah, well, you know, happens when you roll a hundred. It happens, uh, man. Hey, you've just found out your mech's particularly yeah. aerodynamic, though. We're gonna then come over here. Come, Ash! Parts go flying all over. As we're doing the new way of dealing with this. Yeah. 
You know the way. Melee <laughs> is the way. <laughs> All right, we're gonna double. We're gonna we're gonna come back to that spear idea I had. Damn. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have you roll a piloting test mm -hmm. to stay on your feet. Otherwise, you're gonna cartwheel and just <laughs> into the, the rust. Yeah. Okay. Let me think here. I don't have my heavy gyroscope. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, you had to lock that. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure I have anything. Huh? You've got the nice. power of friendship. Just a near miss. You swear okay. it moved. Uh. So what we're going to do is we're going to go past it and hit this one. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, you know what? I'm going to toggle on iron sights for this. Sure. <laughs> that is a maneuver that you have all learned, except for uh, Luna, but uh, you will get that. Uh, turn on the targeting system so I don't get the plus 20. So it's a uh, plus 20 to charge. What, toggling on iron sights? Uh, there's a specific uh, modification that they uh, show. No, the you, you can explain later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'm definitely going to be building a fast mech. I've decided. How do we come back? I'll come back to you. I mean, you're just trying to capitalize on the Apollo speed at this point. Oof. <laughs> you had to say... Oddly enough, the engines are still working. Speed. The jet engines. Yeah. Everything else got totally just messed up. But those jet engines, despite the sheer destructive impact that your frame took, uh, they are working just fine. Never skimped on the engines. Up again. And that's all of them. Uh, oh wait, no, I missed one. So what? The one in the middle? No, it just never got marked as killed. You already did your attack on it. Yeah, no, I missed that one. Mm. So you just roll back and murder it. Murder! Pew! Yeah. Bam. Bam. So, as, as you're waddling back, beaten to shit by a crash, Luna's just gonna send a message over to the Major and just be like, do you, uh, you want a copy of my recording of that? I have... So much data. I'm way <laughs> ahead of you. Oh, no, I thought I'd offer. As everybody else is going to get a similar offer, including you. Do you want a copy of the crash? Yes. <laughs> you will get a copy of the recording. All right, Matt. I got some things Fruit to magnet. Uh, bring up. I expect an exemplary display. Although I don't think I have to tell you that. Your mech will, uh... Well, it's hungry. I know these are minnows. And a shark's teeth, but... Uh, well, he's gonna have to do it. He's gonna have to, uh... Accept minnows. For now. 
All right, Matt. Hmm? So questions, question time. Yeah. You've uh, brought up this new uh, node thing, and I've allocated them to certain places. Um, the one thing I have to ask, when we did the, the initial rekindling, um, are those counted as nodes? Are you or, have to put nodes in them? Or do yeah. I, are, is that okay. what you're saying? Because it was the engine and the cockpit is the two that ex potentially you put it, which was the requirement. Yeah, and, and then I put two more into the heat management and the uh, the clan right. runner. Uh, uh, those do not have potential in them until you wish to or wish not to assign potential to them. And that's entirely up to you. You, you can or you don't so have to. So I'm, uh, I'm, why wouldn't they be if I spent the potential? Well, you only put two in the mech cockpit. And yes. you, didn't have to, you didn't have to spend potentia to rekindle. Rekindling just happens when you put a mech back together that's been totaled. So um, the way the uh, the rolls went, you gave me a 10D100. You said um, if there's any single digits, you can put potentia into it for an increase. And I picked the two because I only had two uh, potential left to use. Okay. And then I put it into the cooling system, and I put it into the uh, the clan. Uh, then frame. they do have the potential in them, yes. Okay, um, so they're are they're not considered nodes, though, right? Nope. Uh, okay. For now, until you have completed the full ritual with the Timber Wolf, uh, you just have an awareness. Anytime you take damage or anything, anytime something has an issue, uh, and then once you have the full setup done. Uh, you can expand your awareness, and then you start getting bonuses to pilot, bonuses to hit, bonuses to dodge. So my question is, are these separate things? Because like I've already created like an armor node and a power core node. So if I was going to do the um, uh, the cockpit and the engine, are those also considered nodes? Or do I have to redo those ones too? Uh, the rekindling ones, those are not nodes. Those will uh, kick in once you have the full skeleton uh, built up. Uh, the nodes are just there to help you expand your awareness and to uh, link any other potential work you've done into the Timberwolf once it's all up and running. Okay. Yep. So for now, you just have a profound understanding of each and every single piece as you actually can f kind of feel uh, how everything's moving and everything is working. And if you had taken any damage or, you know, impacts and better awareness, but uh, it's not a numerical increase yet. Yeah. Cause we were building foundation for it, but that mm -hmm. just means I need to do uh, more for it. Okay. Yep, Sounds good. You need to do more. Uh, it's a, it's a heavy mech. So there's a lot more to do. Yep. If it was a light mech or a medium mech, you would have, significantly less work ahead of you but yeah this is a beast this this is a beast uh All second right, question uh, uh mm -hmm. turbo charge uh what would that be for action economy bonus action bonus action turbo cool all right so uh bonus action used uh yeah. going to once you get uh, more in tune with your mech you can assign to what uh, part of your action economy you want activating a turbo charger too so you can make it a free action bonus react like Sweetness. Yeah. So from the center. Okay. And uh, that's the first turn. Uh, because I do believe that's. Oh, wait, never mind. That's a half action, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, a half action. Yeah, with the turbo charge. All right. Uh, Second thing is we're going to um, fire twin link on this guy. Yeah. So, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, just a ballistic skill test. Now the ninety-seven. Yeah. Uh, Roy will power test. Your mecha is trying to communicate with you. Okay. Nope. It's telling you something. Something. Alrighty. Uh, 
from here, I'm going to uh, use a half action again on the uh, on the shot. I'm going to turn off uh, turbo charge because I don't need it from this position now that I have range on things. I can don't. pretty much uh, hit all my targets within this. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's uh, hit this guy first with a twin link. Yep. And then let's hit this guy with a single. Uh, that's some damage for the tw twin link. No, no, not that guy. I don't have range for that guy. I think it's like 540. Very close, but not cigar. Hitting this guy first. Yep. And then single on this guy. Um, am I higher than the... Uh, yeah. In the container? Okay, so I have a, an angle to shoot that. Let's, uh... Even if you did, it would... Punch right through. Yeah. Roll damage. Yeah. Just... Glork. And then the, uh... Second shot... For the, uh, the single. Uh, hit. And, uh, boom. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, so, just for heat-wise, um, that was 12 total. Mm -hmm. And I have a heat ablation of 20, so that's uh, that was nothing. Um, yeah. it goes away next turn. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try and uh, commune with my mech this turn. Yep, uh, nope. Okay, um, next turn you'll get a plus 10. Sounds good. Uh, what did the commune take? Did it just take like a? You uh, just get one attempt. It doesn't okay. doesn't cost you action economy. No action economy. All right. So uh, single and uh, single. Uh, single miss. Hit. Uh, bam. Uh, I can try with the single again. And then uh, let's go this one here and this one here on my turn. Uh, but first, we'll try a commute again. So, uh, all right, Timber Wolf, what are, you trying to, what are you trying to tell me? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, you're doing this wrong. Timberwolf is meant to run and fight at the same time. And the spirit is telling you this machine, specifically, it's been rekindled and the spirit in it, um, there is, if you commune with it well enough, and you just did, you have a full move in addition to your attack actions. All right. It has a separate move economy attached. As long as you are attacking, if you are not going into the fray, doesn't have, you don't get that extra economy. And if it's a light mech that's just standing there, just run over it. <clears throat> You don't even need to kick it. Just walk into it. I'll crush it underfoot, as any light mech of that piece of shit deserves. Should be trodden into the earth and crushed underneath our feet. Why are you standing still? Let me run. Let me kill. All right. Uh, so bonus action used for the turbo. Activate. Uh, gonna move. It's toggle, actually. Toggle. You have to toggle. You have to toggle it off once it's on. So just run into them, run them over. Yeah. Twenty. 
27 and uh, 27 yeah so I'm uh, gonna squash on this guy and squash on that guy And uh, ballistic skill, ballistic skill shot for twin link. Okay. Choo choo, motherfucker. Basically, yes. Hit, hit. Uh, uh, bam and bam. Uh, next turn. Uh, squash and squash. And uh, two shots. Mm, I think that's willpower I clicked, my bad. And uh, that's it. Yeah. You so. try it back in, and the Timberwolf is just like, yes. Yes. That is, that's right. That feels good. <sighs> and uh, the sheer devastation just by running into objects with the Timberwolf, considering the improved armor it has, it doesn't even scratch. It completely just balls over anything small that it runs into and just is you can feel the satisfaction of trotting things underfoot it was displeased you didn't fire the missiles and didn't twin link all of its lasers and fire everything at in every salvo at every target but it, that, that's okay soon you'll understand soon i just know in my heart that uh Missiles cost money, so if I can use a fusion reactor... Oh, it definitely does. These the Arbus <laughs> missiles are very expensive. <laughs> they are 10 CP a missile. They are very hard to come by. Uh, or a good chunk of budget. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's... Yeah. So you try it back in the... Uh, uh, your major, your uh, commanding officer, mm. you started to finally listen. Took the me a second. Have significantly more than an average mech, don't they? They do. Yes. It's good that you listened. Uh, the more you listen, you'll have to rein it in. That particular mech warrior is um, passionate to put it lightly they can also be demanding and pushy and Loud. bloodthirsty could be worse it could be trying to get you to dance a jig some mech warriors do like to dance but it's more of a dance with death no no I mean a cheerful little jig with uh, high can can for some reason Hi, I'm Milo. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you're going for Can Can. What? The dance. Oh, it's my standard dance that they assigned me. Yeah, but this 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 body can't do. It's this the only dance move that. I know. This 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 unit can't do that though, and you know more than one. I dance can make move. you do it. Don't. I don't want to tip over. Thank you. Okay. Just Shoot because it, do it. You can't hear her. <laughs> Just because it won't hurt doesn't mean it'll be pleasant. Or less embarrassing for me. Okay. But if you want to do it to uh, gra Crash Bandicoot over there, uh, I mean, go for it. How hard it is to I don't know how Crash want Bandicoot. to reach over and push over the fragile frame. 
Cody, get a dodge. <laughs> Somebody's trying to push over your poor little Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I'm standing between Apollo and anybody but the Timberwolf, so... Yeah, no, that's why I said it's so tempting. <sighs> so, uh, I, think, I, think we're, I think we're about... Uh... Apollo, you're with me. You three wonderful, competent pilots. We're going to play one of my favorite games. If you could dodge a wrench, you could dodge an artillery shell. <sighs> <laughs> Good luck, guys. We have a lot of unexpended old ordnance that needs to um, yeah, you, be you used. Gave spiel, you, you gave the spiel when you shot it at him. Oh, no, no. There's so <laughs> much ordnance. Uh, the full artillery team now has actually deployed all of the assets. Uh, we need to expend about nearly 12,000 shells unused. You will not be subjected to all of them. Other teams are going to be privileged to be granted such an opportunity to hone their skills under fire in a relatively safe environment. But you're going to get at least a tenth of it sent your way over the hour-long trek back. Permission to start sprinting now. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Luna's already got the machine yep, in motion. Is already, <sighs> Nix is already gone. Apollo, uh, um, you have no opportunity to survive this. You get hit once, you will be pieces. So you're going to be standing next to me. And if something comes along, I'll just step in the way. It is an opportunity lost, but you can engage autopilot and do a little bit hmm. of personal time. maintenance. Or something. Maxi, start autopilot. Just autopilot engaged. Hey Matt, you do see sparking off of certain components. <laughs> As certain it, interfaces <laughs> are just like. Gzz, gzz. All right. Hey yeah, Matt, emergency. One um, second, Liam. Okay. <laughs> just pull out the emergency uh, repair kit. Start getting to work. You're literally pulling off panels. It's like it was just a small collision. It wasn't. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't that fast. You do realize that uh, your heavy gyroscopic uh, G-force crash chair mm -hmm. uh, did save your life because <laughs> the impact you hit with that Mickey was life-threatening <laughs> for a normal analog cockpit pilot. Uh, but yeah, that specialized chair that you built, despite ending up upside down at an angle, you're fine. Yeah. It was... It scared the shit out of you, but that was about it. Uh, Liam? I was just gonna say, I'm just gonna tell Milo to, um, to, like, just fucking hack anybody that's acting as a spotter for this artillery right now. <laughs> do you want to get real good at what you do or do you want me to help you cheat uh, hmm. <laughs> she, Nick, she, she can feel, feel. Yeah, she can, she can you're feel. my best friend and I will help you cheat anytime I, you ask I, I, I will say fair warning specifically to my uh, chiropractor buddy as you seem prone to hacking. D don't try and hack the spotters. Our major is one of them. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm. So As... it'll be an exercise and it'll be a measured tempo. Um, you can actually, after a while, determine incoming trajectories, even through the, the, the rust. It's a harrowing first 10 minutes because it is absolute chaos. And eventually, you kind of get an understanding. Artillery, while devastating and very scary, especially in a, an environment that you can't just look up and see an incoming shell because of the obscurity of the rust uh, that gets blown around all the time. Um, 
there is a sound involved, and a, a you also know which direction they're coming from. And unpredictable movements do increase massive chances of you just not getting hit, especially if you spread out. Um, for those participating, I'm going to give you a 10d100, one for each hour. And uh, we'll start with uh, Johnny. Okay. Roll me 10d100. Who is sending me private messages? Okay. Uh, unfortunately, your rolls. Mm, that's so great. Uh, mm -hmm. But you increase your agility by two. Uh, Nix. Hit me up with that Tandy Wahanda bro. I, oh. All right. Uh, well, you've already maxed out your dodge, so. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and increase your agility by four. Okay. Uh, Liam. Only that Tandy Wahanda. Oh, two ones and a hundred. What the hell is this? Holy God shit, damn, bombs. Liam. Uh, there you go. That's, that's some rolls uh, for you. Hmm. What's your dodge? I believe zero. Max that shit out. Sorry, no, it's at one. Okay, max it out. I... Four. Um, so, I'm going to give you a little cool little power. It's a, basically, it's a talent. Uh, it's called Evasive. Uh, you can spend merit to improve it or train it up. Uh, what it does is when you are targeted by a barrage, which includes SRMs or LRMs or a grouping of artillery, um, if you are successfully hit and you aren't able to get out of the way, um, you are hit by one unit less, and if you successfully dodge, you have one ad additional degree of success. Yes. So if you All succeed, right. one additional degree. So uh, it's not a plus 10, but you get one more success if you do pass. If you fail, you're hit by one incoming target less. So one SRM, one LRM, one artillery. Uh, one uh, specific bomb, if in case you get carpet bombed yeah. by a fighter. So you get hit by one particular uh, explosive less than you would normally. So I'm going to, I just phrase it as uh, when I dodge, it counts as one degree higher. And on a failed dodge, there hits count as one degree lower. Yeah, and that also stacks with any EMS and any other defensive systems. And it does round down to a good solid zero. If... Okay, so it can't go down to zero. Yeah, cool. you can completely nullify in case you get hit <laughs> so... by like one single thing left. This will chop off that last piece, yeah. So that tells me what the ones do. What's the 100 do? Uh, Milo convinces you that um, it won't hurt. You can take the kinetic energy out of that projectile. I'll show you. Can't, I don't... Are you sure? Have you done yeah, that before? Yeah, and she does stop a projectile. It sucks the oh. kinetic energy out of it, and it just nosedives and plants in the earth completely a dud. Oh, that's cool. Alright, well, let me try it. Oh, and God. it does not work, and you get hit directly, and it's just like... And you get sent spiraling. Milo! I don't have that one on recording. <laughs> yeah. Don't think I can't believe your recording. Shield, because of your evasion, uh, it chews up almost all of the shield, and you have a. Uh, the shield kind of flickers for a good bit, and then it reboots back up because it's a, it's a very powerful shield unit. But uh, from the sheer force, you were knocked flat. All right, we're Milo. We're we're gonna practice that not with artillery shells. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna roll because it could end up costing you a little bit. Uh, I mean, this isn't my direct, unit, so. Yeah, direct it. Uh, 
No, not even close. <laughs> I roll like shit. Does not yeah. even even approach the forty five shield. Double one. Yeah. Wow, Leo. I get the only one hundred, but I get two ones. I take it. Yeah. So, uh, technically, Milo did do as advertised. You just. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, how? We, what the we, we will revisit that when we're not practicing with uh, artillery shells. I mean, it's fine. No, it's not fine. I can. Hi. You know, I didn't think I could feel my molars being rattled anymore, but I did. I mm-hmm. did. And, uh, Cody. Um, roll me a milk building. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're poor Apollo. You pull it, you pull the panels out, you're checking the wiring. Um, you did a great job building this thing up. Everything is slightly out of place, as if that impact literally shifted whole compartments and components of the mech by Mm -hmm. several inches on the inside. Note to self, Aaliyah shift next time. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, uh, you didn't use your spatial fold compressor. Unfortunately, uh, it is a full action to do so. Yep. And uh, you haven't gotten it down to a reaction, but you know what? That is just learning. Part of Mark II. That that's that's for Mark yeah. II. And Cody's now just gonna start uh basically cross examining his mech with the Hornet that he has specs for. I'm like, all right, what does he have? Let's start looking oh, at the That thing is so over specced. It <laughs> your Apollo is it's kinda like, no, don't don't compare me. Don't you do that. It hurts. Look, He's cool and I'm not. Don't worry, we'll make you cool. Uh you're looking at a difference about two hundred and fifty K uh wreck and mm-hmm. probably about fourteen months of a C rank budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what you're looking at with that Hornet mech. And then you made it Leah enabled. Oh my yeah. goodness. That is a that is what we call an A rank mech. It's not an S tier. Right. S tier involves a lot of rekindling, uh, and it usually has a personality. Mm-hmm. So the Timberwolf would be considered an S tier. Not an S plus, but an, uh, definitely an S. Yeah, it, it just S it just plus. overperforms <laughs> anything that it comes in contact with. Mm-hmm. And uh, since he's an Iron Eater, he can continually unlock more and more performance from a mech that overperforms, anyways. Um, so yeah, so that's why Iron like... Eaters are just so so powerful. <sighs> but. Uh, they don't really have any um, civilian mode built into their livelihoods. They're basically Enigma's eternal warriors forever. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's what they do. And if you're ever at peace, you go pick a fight with someone who is like, dude, I thought we were friends. We got to fight. I'm sorry. It has to happen. <laughs> But uh, that won't happen anytime soon, so we're good. Yeah, you guys have a lot of people to fight. <laughs> you guys have picked fights with the galactic neighbors. So I'm gonna fucking fight you. You don't understand. We have too many people. You know, you say we, but I feel like the individuals part of the there we. aren't specifically responsible. If you're, if you're under the Thunderhead, you're a we. A we. <laughs> the only person who could say I is the Thunderhead, and usually that's a we. Alright. Yeah, a we folk! <laughs> the we folk. You guys eventually get back to base, and right as you guys are entering the the uh, drop-off area, uh, the blessed silence of the winds 
just uh, that's all you can hear. The shells have stopped firing. As you approach, you can hear the percussion of the guns louder and louder. And... Oh, oh look, they're shooting here. Yeah. And you... Uh, as you guys approach the docking sequence, you actually hear them open up again as the guns that were firing you have reoriented for other fields. Wonderful job, my little trickities. I Wonderful didn't blow indeed. up. So, now you can understand the power of not only the Maxi pilot, but also what the hell looks like a, uh, artillery guns, bombs. Uh, things that rain down from above and cause absolute hellscape around you. And a lot of problems for you. Now, those are old munitions. They are no longer in service because the munitions we produce for artillery bombardments are at least four times as effective. But they do take up the exact same amount of space as the new munitions. So we need to Utilize the old munitions. Rotate. Exactly. Those who undergo the fire and flames treatment, well, you're all iron eaters to me. At least for today. <laughs> uh, Jackie, go ahead and move your mech back to its personal hangar. And, uh, Everyone will have the rest of the day off, as we have gone late into our day. Uh, make sure you give that Timberwolf a proper shutdown treatment and attention. I know we didn't give, give it a particularly good meal, so it may uh, may have a taste for blood still that you may have an issue with. I know the feeling. As for those who pilot the Reginalds, well... Unfortunately, you'll have to give those back, but you will no longer be piloting Mickeys. We had made the mistake of putting you in subpar machinery, but at least it needs to happen once so you can understand how shit they are. Those will be temporarily, temporarily on loan to you for your practice models from here forward until you complete your training. Uh... Next, it looks like you have suffered a minor bit of battle damage. You will stick around until the mechanic team comes by, and you will help them replace the plating. I think that would be a good experience for you. Understood. And as for you, Luna, yes. it looks like you have no particularly battle damage on your mech. Uh, once you have done the complete sequence, you're free to use the rest of your day. Thank you, ma'am. If you choose to go to dinner, you may. If you don't particularly need dinner, do what you need. Thank you, uh, man. We are arriving a little uh, half past after lunch, so you have quite a bit of the day left. I have some ideas. Thank you, Of man. course. Stay out of trouble. This time I will. Good. As for you, Cody... I recommend taking that back to your personal hangar, as it's been released from its temporary hangar. Uh, and you were free to work on it for... Well, it's uh, it's been tried and tested. It's been released back into your custody. As you can I... see, uh, we have tested it to pieces and put it back together. And uh, now you get to feel firsthand a little bit of our concerns. I thank you very much. I will be in the process of disassembling and reobtaining parts. Everything but my food. Um, quartermaster, the Iron Eater quartermaster and the Thunderhead quartermaster are available on base. You can, of course, use your budget to particularly purchase uh, specific parts you need, as well as use any requisition that you 
can get your hands on. Ho ho. Thank you, Major. I very much rec- uh, request and advise you particularly move the Apollo to the Mark II status post haste. Uh, unfortunately, the Iron Eaters will not sign off on the Apollo Mark I as it is a liability to the pilots. So much so that we have put it on the level of the Mickey for lethality of pilot involvement. Um, it's also 3,000% more expensive than a Mickey. So, uh, we also recommend building a model that does not have a Leah compartment because. Not many are qualified to use Leo technology. There will be a redacted version for you to look over. I recommend a build that can that is a custom job for those who are permitted to use Leo technology, and then build a model that can be mass produced hastily. We do need a good scout model, and I think that has potential. But honestly, Mark One is. Uh, I mean, if you wish to throw away a bunch of lives, that's a good way to do it. Yes, Major. But good job so far. I don't say that often. That's a great first attempt. God, it's going to blow away. It was a pleasure for us to break the shit out of it. Uh, as you're kind of moving away, uh, Luna's actually going to catch up to you real quick. And like, I have a question for you, Mr. Mechhead. Yes, Just a quick question. Um, how well do mechs handle layering one type of honor, armor on top of another? Not well. They become very slow. Hmm. Is it an issue of weight then, or weight and joint pressure? Well, let me put it into a different phrasing then, because I just realized how that might have sound. Um, what if you're just trying to supplement the fact that you don't have enough armor to actually cover your mech correctly, and you're just trying to supplement it with a different armor type underneath your armor type? That makes no sense. What are you trying to do? I don't have enough stealth armor to fully fix the armor of my mech. Can I plate endo steel with it? You actually do. Uh, the that that metal metallurgy uh, specialist. Uh, wow. He will be able to fully fix the Sarabat. Oh, plating. It's going to be costly though. He's. The only guy on base that you can con- that you have contracted successfully to do that. Well, I'm still going to ask that question as a uh, you know, just in case I can't afford his work thing. So basically, yes, I'm just you could, you would cut the effectiveness of whatever armor you have, and then you start having problems with armor, just well-roundedness. And it depends on what types you have. If you have a full leg of one and a full and a half leg of another, you have to replace the half leg with just full one type. Uh, generally speaking, what I was considering doing then on that front... Then there's weight problems. Don't do it. Uh, generally speaking, what I was considering for it, if I couldn't get the stealth armor, is, that's if I can't get the stealth armor, was uh, basically putting half endo on and then layering the stealth on top. Again, that makes no sense. Don't layer your armor. If you're going to have stealth armor, have stealth armor on one arm, one arm. If you can't have the chest, then use the use endo seal on the chest. I don't see why that doesn't make sense, but okay. Because that's not layering, that's sectioning. I feel as though that's a very much a semantic answer, but okay. With that particular armor, if you don't have a full set that covers the entirety of the mech, you might as well do it that. Alright. 
that because that's the that's the I have to go see the the key of that list. particular mech is that if you get a full covering you get no that's fine benefit. I'm not I'm not gonna argue with it it's fine the question was asked question was answered um yeah I'm gonna have to go talk to the metallurgist then. Cool. Let's go talk to a metallurgist. So she's gonna. That's what she's gonna go do. And the guy's is like, I will buy that out. booze. Which round? I will buy that booze beforehand. Which was how much? Yeah. Uh, uh, depends on how much wreck you want to spend. How much was it for this type type of stuff he drinks? I remember he drinks like the Iron Eater stuff. So. Yeah, that's, that's ten rec. That's that's an expensive as that's heck cool. bottle of alcohol. I'll tell you what. Yep, I'll buy it. Okay. I'll come up and be like, All right, "What you uh, got for me?" He he's gotta toss him the bottle. And be like, oh, I'm wide awake. Wide awake. What am I looking at? I have a bit of a issue. Are you... Well, I'm going to assume you're probably going to be familiar with it, but are you familiar with the uh, Ega model stealth mech? Mm, Ega's a piece of shit. But the armor's not. Mm. I mean, the armor's light, certainly. But... The Ega is a stealth frame. The armor... Separate from the actual frame. Fair enough. Let me put it in a different way. I've got the armor, but it's damaged. Well, there's a lot of armor out there that's damaged. It's the stealth armor. There's a lot of stealth armor that's damaged. <sighs> what was the name of this armor, Matt? Because I don't see it written down on here. It is, actually. It's under armor. Under, st under the actual handout I made for you. Oh. There it is. Sarabat refractive armor. She's clarified. You, you got the comet armor. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I found one. Uh, you fancy was... boy. You fancy. Oh, I salvaged it. Uh, apparently, the pilot took a sword directly through the chest. No other That's damage. That's the best way to go. Oh. It's quick. It's real quick. No other major damage to it, but it does mean that. Um... There's always major damage. Comet armor is made of. Per crystal. It's very brittle. I was about Any to say, real damage. It, it's more that there's just wear and tear after that. Mm-hmm. I call bullshit, because that, that, that oh, armor's going to be fucked up. Everything's at best half. That's fine. Except for the left, I can fix it. The left arm. I can fix it. What would it cost me? <sighs> well, you bring me good booze, so I'll give you a discount. You, you you know how to get me interested. Also, I haven't worked on. Oh, I haven't worked on the uh, C seventy twenty nine P one Sarabat refractive armor in a long time. Comet armor. It's made from a fucking comet. Honestly, I've heard good things about you. So if you wanted to, I don't know, improve it in any way. There's no proving that. Experiment. That's as stilly as still fucking gets, except for some of the nullity systems that you can end up getting. Uh, I mean, the only thing better, next best thing is that the experimental, well, phase dimensional armor that one of them ACE units got. I got, I got to lick that armor once. Still can't get that taste out of my mouth. She'll, good, she'll nod good. like she has any idea what he's on about, thinking about yeah, the programs good, she's done that look, with. It was a good solid lick. I went, right? and the lace went, I'm going to kill you. You don't glit my armor. And I was like, mm, I just did. Fight me. And he almost did. Actually, mm. we did fight, but with words. It was crazy. I won, definitely. Hmm. I kind of did that once with, uh, I, I work with a lot of soft. You bring it in, yeah. I got to lick your armor. I got to yeah. taste it. I got to taste the purity. Make sure yeah, I bring it on in. Uh, okay, 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 good, 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 good. Okay, so, um, to fix C7829 P1 Cerebrad Refractive Armor, I'll go mix. Yes. I'll tell you what, right now, it's going to be real expensive. Uh, it's going to cost you 
20. 20 big ones per piece. So mm. chest, leg, other leg, arm, other arm, head, back. 20, 20 big ones per piece. Or you can pay me in B rank budget. <clears throat> 1% B rank budget per part. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, budget. You don't have budget. I do. I do do barter, by the way. I do barter pretty good. If you got stuff to trade, oh. I like trade. Uh, I don't do favors. I hate favors. I always forget about the favors that I'm owed. So I don't do favors no more. I need That's stuff fair. in my hand, you know, in my hand. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um. You said it's twenty per. For the that's to repair the whole limb, twenty big ones. Yeah. Wait, twenty big ones. Did you mean twenty wreck? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Per going, limb. Mm. Head, mm. torso, back. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, sounds and like that's I'm if the gonna... armor is of a certain percentage, because otherwise, you can't repair it. Yeah, she's going to kind of shrug at that point and be like, oh, well, enjoy the booze then, because I can't afford that. Darn, man. Uh, nah, that's fair it's, enough. It's very, very expensive, that type of armor, because uh, we were able here. to mine a part of the comet, and now it's off to the next solar system. Or, given that it was made of a stealth material, it could still very well be here, and we just don't know. Oh, no, we know. We know exactly where it is. It's in the dead of enemy territory. Ah. Cruising along. Like it don't care. Wait, Because it don't. Because it's a comet. Huh. Well, enjoy the booze. Well, you come back, I'll fix it right for you. It's not that hard. Actually, yeah. it's extremely hard to fix that fucking stuff. Actually, you know what? Could you at least help me with more evenly distributing the armor what there is of it? Nope. Damn. All right. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. I will say it is, though. If you get that full armor, you can pay for it up and running. I mean, you can strap it on any light frame and you just. You snaky. You're real fucking snaky. In fact, you yeah, may even forget fair. your place in space or where you're standing. Well, thank you for your time, sir. Oh, Until... Big advice, though. It doesn't do real good on this planet, though. All the particulates floating about, it actually will uh, paint an outline of where the particulates don't flow. It's kind of a... It's like a negative photo, you know? Hmm. Might explain why it got nailed. Probably, actually. Dumbass pilot would have got him killed. All right. With that, um, hmm. I guess I'll have to put the stealth armor away for now and just use some standard shit. You can ask Cody. What? To try and stash it or try and fix it? How many armor pieces do you need? Uh, let's see. Right legs, five out of... Here, I'm just going to copy-paste this. The durability is actually... Pretty much in for everything except the like intact except for the torso. Yeah, but that's that's what I'm looking at for the actual armor. Uh, I also have spare plates of the 1729 P1 Sarabat refractive armor. So, uh... would you happen to have any of that alien Titan? Alien who do what? The alien chitin, the alien... Oh yeah, I got all sorts of that shit! Well? Huh. 
I'm a metallurgist. And that thing ain't metal. I still licked it. <laughs> uh, I think I could get some of that. Yeah, for a price. Um, do do do. It's plate. I like plate. It's hard. Why is my percentage gone? I was just looking for my percentage of the me the uh, thing, and it is not on my sheet anymore. For the uh, the 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 endo steel from the worm. Uh, you should have two percent. Uh, which, what was what was that equivalent of? It's difficult to give any equivalent. Uh, well, for I'm a just, the equivalent, I'm sure I equivalent we got was three percent was a light frame. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure. Uh, out. No, one percent is a light frame for the reinforced. Um, it goes up drastically after that, but it's a light frame, so it's like. Ugh. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of look at them and be like, I was thinking about trying to put that onto a mech instead. It's an interesting idea, regenerative armor. Eh. Yeah, alien systems to make it regenerative. Otherwise, it's just a mm. big plate. Doesn't really generate itself. You need a system that, you know, makes it regenerate. I see. And those are probably impossible to get your hands on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got the plates, but I ain't got the alien bits. Good to know. I'll definitely be back because I'm going to You got to go to the black market. <laughs> or you got to go to, like, people who got that shit. Well, I will be... I will be back here. I'm. Where's I here? have to get arm. Hmm? Where's here? Like here, 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 yeah. over there, here. Back to you. I'm gonna be coming back to you for metal later. I gotta. What if I'm see. not here? Do you have anything that can actually up on that, that can actually slap armor onto that frame? Actually. Oh, I got all this. I got all this stuff. I'm looking for something lighter that I could also. I was actually thinking about combining it with a uh, shield bearer torsos or a shield bearer uh, shield unit that I have. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe. I mean, you also got to consider size, right? What's the size? Mine is medium. That's what I was trying to find what the shield unit's size is. Well, then you got a problem. That's a... You can dig out the turtle parts, but it's if it's a medium frame, they don't work too well with a... What am I, I was just thinking about the uh, shield generator itself. That takes 6 CP. Yeah. Lab um... frames don't particularly do too well, unless they have a particular... Uh, inside bitty bit, which would left be for the shield. But I ain't, I ain't no milk builder. Oh, fair I enough. Just, I'm, I'm the metal man. Metal, it's what, nice uh, and what hard. Kind of it arm, tastes good. What kind of armor do you have right now? That'll be. I got all sorts of armor. Depends on how much you can purchase. What money you get? I'm looking for something that's going to be decent on the side for stealth. That's what I'm after. I'm not trying to be the center of anybody's fucking attention. Uh, armor? No. You paint right. a black, you put a self system. Alright. But what would you recommend for a light frame if I want to have something that's not going to get me killed in this Ega? Uh, for your budget, Fair Fibers. Fair fiber? Yeah. Hmm. It's cheap. Better than normal belt armor. Well, I do have... Uh, me and my team, we did get the... Uh, we were the ones that hunted the worm with the uh, base commander. So I, I could just use the endo from that, I suppose. Yeah, how much you get? Uh... 
super two percent and enough for uh at least getting a light done i think yeah that frame not your armor hmm. frame is just a skeleton it's actually pretty cheap if you wanna you're gonna need probably a one percent or a two percent chit two percent for the chest one percent for the arms legs and back and a head if you want it clad and reinforced and steel mm. so numbers one two three four five six seven eight eight percent doing it, including the frame yeah. what about um is there anything you'd be willing to trade for for that Hell yeah, I like that reinforced end of steel. Real fancy. Yeah. Uh, give me that 2%, I'll fix up that stealth armor for you. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, reinforced end of steel, real hard come by, I'll tell you what. Yeah, no, it's a deal. I'm only fixing the plate. Remember, I I mess with that mech shit because that's from the mech builders. They get well, really touchy about them. Them. them the mech the things. plating is what I was coming to you for. I can oh. handle my own. I can handle the the, the mech stuff elsewhere. Okay, that's, yeah, we can do that. Yes, that's that's real fine. Then mech boys, I don't understand them tech heads. I honestly think they they got way too much going on in their head. I come over, I lick that armor, and they they, they be going like. Uh, why are you licking that armor? Get out of here. What you doing? And I'm like, I'm licking the armor. See if it's good. All right. So if he's willing to trade the uh, the endo for fixing my armor, that works. I wasn't sure if he would accept that. That's why I didn't bring it up originally. But if it works, it works. What's that? Barter. It's pretty valuable barter because it's a scarce barter, so you know price is jacked up. Yeah, so that that's good for me. Then I'll I'll take that deal. Okay, so that'll get my armor fixed, huh? Yep. That'll take about a week because they got to do fine. it right. That's fine. Uh, in the meantime, for getting other things done, um, there's of course other things I need to get repaired on the fucking mech. You probably want to get that. You could probably get that done cheaply with Cody. That was the general plan, but some of it I was actually going to look at trying to get done myself, so I didn't have to bother Cody on his downtime. Sure. Not, uh, we'll not, hold the you real, there. not the real expensive stuff. I'm just thinking like replacing the cockpit, much as it's intensive, I'm just replacing one cockpit with another. I could probably handle that with my level of mech building. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, you can replace bits. If I was upgrading, I'd probably go to Cody. Yeah. Um, We're going to hold you there for a sec, and then yeah, we'll come back to you. Uh, next. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you're still here with us. Uh, your mech has unfortunately suffered a smidge of damage. The moment you power down, there's a crew there. And they're like, That's a shame. Real shame. Mm-hmm. Here with that, uh, Individual like yourself could uh, kind of figure out not the power of the merchandise. He's just keeping a flat face and already looking at the mech to see what's actually damaged. Uh, there is a big chunk of the chest plate that's just it's got huge wrens and a, actually a part of it's shorn off 
Man, with uh, only two points of damage to the 55 armor? Yeah, it's superficial. It yeah. looks nasty, but it's just superficial. Yeah, okay. You just like, it's a scratch. Yeah, but we gotta replace the scratch anyways now, don't we? Obviously. Alright, let's get to work. Here's your clothes. You're gonna want them. Mm hmm. Oh, they gave you some clothes that are not uh, supposed to be clean. They're they're meant to get dirty. And uh, if you don those clothes and begin the uh, repair process, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward, um, especially on how they remove the plate. It's nothing like the advanced interlocking armor systems of uh, the ace that you previously looked at. Uh, the plate, the chest plate that took damage, actually doesn't require... Uh, much prep to even get at it. Mm -hmm. And it's just they, they attach a couple chains to it and they basically have it disconnect and hold off by crane and then they crane in the other piece and they just reattach it. Takes all about about an hour. He's just keeping track, watching. You yeah, know. you can also have this all recorded too. Yeah, but Definitely, he basically do, taking any opportunity he can to study. He'll be sitting there mm -hmm. randomly asking questions of them of how they do other parts and shit like that while they're doing that. Normally, it would be faster. The, the tech lead guy, or the you know, the lead tech kind of admits, uh, trying to train people, but also. We really don't particularly have any uh, reason to rush, so uh, we take our time, but we still do it right, you know? And it's not getting ready to be sent right back out into battle immediately. Yeah. So there's no need to rush, which is why I'm going to sit here and probe you with questions the entire time I have the chance. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, he'll actually go through the process of, you know, how to usually dislodge a uh, chest plate. Mm -hmm. uh, some have a just what they call the tombstone. And a tombstone is a just a chunk of metal. It's just a chunk of metal. And it's the only thing in the way between enemy fire and your cockpit. If the tombstone ever is destroyed or gone or missing and you take a hit, it's direct cockpit damage. So if you lose your tombstone, yep. Don't lose your tombstone. Yep. Yep. Or get something to get in the way. Explains why it's called a tombstone. Yeah. Um, uh, but they uh, every other piece doesn't particularly need a crane to move. This. Even for a medium mech, you need a crane to move the tombstone out of the way. The, the chest torso plate. Yep, makes sense. It's, it's too dense, too heavy. Every other piece can just, somebody can use an exo frame to pull it off, but. I, I mean, quiet. as the major put it, this is a Iron Eater special, so I didn't expect any part of it to be light. No. They put a lot of work into this, these these regionals. And he's like, well, good work. Uh, you helped with the uh, the repair job, so, uh, yeah, it's on the house. Gives him a thumbs up. Off with you. Yep, he's going to wander off. Uh, Johnny boy. Shadow Boy, you and your Timberwolf get back to the hangar. Timberwolf mm -hmm. is vibrating with energy. It's like, when are we going out? 
when are we gonna go when we're we killing again all right so uh what i'm gonna be doing is uh calming the timber wolf down in a sense uh yep. giving some dang uh it. dang it's excited it tasted blood it wants more blood not enough blood So, yeah, let's just uh, do that for a bit. I, uh, I give him promises. Be like, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go out and do it some more. When? Soon, though. Yeah. Rawr. Soon. Kind of snarls at you a little bit, like, soon is not a... When? I hate soon. We'll get there. Grumble, grumble, grumble. So, uh, we have the rest of the afternoon off, right? Uh, yes, actually. All right. So, how many downtime actions would that be? Uh, you could probably fit two before dinner. Okay. Um, your usual four afterwards, and okay. however much you want to stay awake. And I assume I would get one less because I spent an hour fixing my mech. Yes. Uh, and Luna had spent her two downtime actions before dinner going to the metallurgist and purchasing the booze for him. Because um, it takes a bit of traveling to actually get down to his uh, okay. his forge. Alright, so, uh, two, uh, will be before dinner, we'll put turn yeah. that on the four, uh, so you were saying earlier about, um, how it's Grandmaster style right now for these free stuff that I'm putting into the mech, but then uh, after it's going to be more expensive, or? No, it's, uh, putting the, uh, Building potential specifically for the mech mm -hmm. isn't particularly expensive when you're putting the foci points. Because uh, that's one for one. Yeah, yeah. The technique to extend your consciousness, that is an actual potential technique that you cultivate uh, for yourself. Okay. Which is a three downtime action for one potential. Okay. For that. But if you're building uh, external potentia specifically for that mech, it's a one for one. So let's do the uh, the initial three for this first potentia for this technique. Cool. I have two downtime and plus one for the uh, cultivation. So okay, uh, for your first extension. Uh, what that does is it increases your battlefield awareness. So anytime you use a awareness-based test to mm -hmm. locate the enemy, you get a plus 10. Okay, easy enough. Uh, you also get the keen awareness talent attached as well. Keen intuition, you mean? Yeah, keen intuition. It's the, gotcha. If you fail it, you roll out a minus 10. Yep, I like that one. Um, perfect. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is we'll make free potential for the mech itself. Okay. And then, uh, go have some supper. Can't, can't miss out on Lily's cooking. Oh, yeah. After that, uh, I'll meet up with Cody and help him out with any, uh, heavy lifting he needs for mech repairs or, uh, Anything along those lines. And if he doesn't meet me, well, I'll just go back to cultivating. Yeah. Oh, Cody. Oh, <laughs> poor Apollo. Dear goodness. Figured uh, you could you... use some... Oh, good. I was just saying, I, I figured you could use an extra hand since a uh, fair amount of it uh, got taken off. So. Well, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have to spend too much effort removing <laughs> the tombstone off the, the thing because there's not much left of it. Yep. That's literally just drop. So, you get that thing barely back to your private lab, get it locked in, do the boot down sequence, and you just, you finally get a look at it at a distance, and 
uh, it's kind of hunched. And the shoulders, the left one is at least 14 inches higher than the right shoulder in elevation. Mm -hmm. You warped and bent pretty much the entire torso. Yep. Oof. I just kind of sit there and I'm like, well, uh, I have other things I need to do today. And we're going to circumnavigate building around those two things. Ah. And it's just me, Lexi, please see if you can get me a meeting with Arkeo and my master at their earliest convenience. I have the ability um, to reach out to your master, but Arkeo is a restricted access. Fair enough, because they're my master due for that. Most likely. Yep. I'm just going to start walking over and start, like, taking off parts and... About halfway done, he's like, "All right," and I'm like, "Master, are you there?" Yes, apprentice. Ah, uh, two things, master. One, I can count. You are fortunate. <laughs> One, uh, I was wondering if you could help me cultivate today. Two. Can you get me a meeting with Arkeo before he leaves? Yes, and yes, absolutely. I'm glad that you have a proactive stance to cultivation. Thank you. As Thank for you. a meeting with Arkeo, that's not going to be cheap. Uh, His schedule is filled. There's not a moment of downtime, in fact. Uh, the motto is, you can sleep in transit. Fair. So getting you in would be forcing someone out. Someone less important, even, of course. But I don't even need just a moment of his time between two lectures, I guess would be a way to put it. Two of between. his lectures, or just in between the lectures? In between the lectures. That does not give a lot of time. Usually one rolls into the next. Just enough time to try and strike a deal with him. Hmm. Don't offer something simple. Arkeo will have zero interest in things like budget. They have an A rank. Requisition. They have no. They have no limits. What do you think would be antagonizing for him? Enticing. What kind of thing? One mm. of a guy in objects. Or tech. Or. Uh, anything that. Uh, well. Would interest someone who's seen it all. I doubt alien tech would do anything for him. Depends on the alien tech. Mostly no. Maybe you found something stupidly rare. I'm going to stop and look down at the engine that I got. I'm like, what do you know about that engine? Oh, that's a Viper class interceptor engine. Hmm. It is uh, faster than the ones you got in the Apollo. Ah, good to know. Cody sits there and scratches his head. How long will he be in base? Um, three days. Give me three days to think of something. Yeah. Uh, normally he was supposed to stay on base longer, but now that the event has been concluded. 
there's no real reason for him to stay on base, and he's a very popular individual. I can imagine. Some, some clans, the Cultivator clans, actually pay to have him expedited towards their uh, locale. So, mm. yeah, they pay him to cut his time short at the location he is in to arrive at their destination sooner so that he can stay longer at that destination. It's uh, kind of impressive, but it is what it is. Well, I'll make it happen. Don't you worry. Thank you. Just don't waste his time. I mean, I'm going to have to offer him either a favor of Beyond Proportion or... Well, I mean, again, we're going to put it under the Leah umbrella, so I'm just going to have to owe him. Ugh. So, Master, I have figured out how I'm going to try and get my a rank budget. Don't hurt yourself. I'm going to need uh, a research chamber within the lead department. Oh boy. Uh, and I'm just going to look at it. Uh, is there a guy or a girl? Uh, which one? My master theory doesn't have a doesn't have a gender. It's an ascended. They don't Fair. have genders. Well, I mean, masculine or feminine form. Neither. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna look at her and be like, I'm thinking of between one of my associates figuring out how to allow Leah to be transferred from. Starship to canister. Hmm. Uh, canister. And thus giving me my renewable A rank budget. Dangerous. I understand. Do the. Uh, yes, I think I can. I think I'm beginning to understand how dangerous it is. I mean, everything is dangerous in this game. So you are not alone, my dear adventurer. Okay. He's gonna step down. Hoo-ha, let's do this. Okay, then do it. Uh, so... How is it? Potential. Uh, and you still need to learn the Leah shift, so that, is that a potential role or a Leah role? I believe Matt. that question was directed towards you, Matt. Sorry, I missed that question. Uh, I still need to learn Leah shift. Is that a potential role or a Leah role? No, that's a 100% Leah role. Okay. And... Leah technology. Let's take a peek at Deek. Nope. Nope. Uh, you have progress towards learning Leah shift. Okay. Fortunately, it is a very complex technique, as is all Leah. The reason you picked up that other technique earlier is you had 11 degrees of success. That's nope. a lot of success. That is fair. Uh, I have an extra downtime for it, so might as well. Uh, mm, do I have any bonuses? Do not. 
I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go use my driven on that one. This is better. Uh, let's take a big dick. Um, still not enough. That's fair. Even putting them together, it's uh, you still have it together exceeded fifteen. So that's fair. Uh, but your master will, you know, uh, if you wish to train mm. with your uh, master, you will. Uh, that person will make themselves available for you, yeah. despite all the other projects that they would be involved in, which is, well, it's a pretty good master then. Yeah. And yeah, like, that's why I was uh, mm. having you there. So I can make sure I could get my Leo training done. Mm -hmm. Well, regardless, uh, they're going to train you, mm. at least minimize basically a soul uh, techniques. I, I but, mean, uh, hmm. If you wanna, if you're uh -huh. feeling well physically, mentally, spiritually, then you can actually push for faster training yeah. or more training. And I think Cody's gonna try and push for more training. Gets him. Of Why not? Hell yeah! Away from the whole aspect of uh, <laughs> the Mac. Yeah, it's yeah. your, uh, it's your portal into the unknown. How that? <laughs> I mean, Leah is crazy, man. Uh, I rolled a one on my Leah tests. All right, I quit. <laughs> no, <laughs> Cody. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of degrees. That's one. <laughs> um, oh. Wait, no. Uh, Leah is int, so I get a plus one to my int. Uh, you do. Yeah, you do. Isn't that your second one in regarding to Leah? Uh, yes, because my first one was to learn Leah in the first place. Uh, jeez. Well, you definitely learned that technique you're looking for. It's like, well, if I try hard enough a whole bunch of times, <laughs> probability dictates that. Oh, now I learned it. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, you'll you'll pick it up. Okay. You never. And told me mechanically what I need to do for it, though. So the the Leah shift, uh, that's shifting it back to matter. Matter, yeah. Uh, you need a Leah canister to fuel it. You need mm -hmm. to use a whole Leah charge to fuel it because you you haven't completed the transition process. Mm -hmm. But you've figured out. With Lexi doing some of the worst of the math, mm -hmm. uh, you have just enough mental uh, acuity with some very creative rounding. You can kind of get it to just work. Okay. Are, are there going to be imperfections? Yeah, unfortunately, you just you don't have a quantum computer for a brain. It won't be yeah. perfect. Molecules are going to be off. But you figured out how, which normal people without a computer brain, technically that's not possible. Not at all. And your master just kind of stands there like, that's ugly. That's that dead. Wow. That is all sorts of incorrect. But I'm <laughs> proud you successfully shifted it back, because that's hard as hell. I, I, I don't, I don't think you understand how misaligned those molecules are. But it's not enough to have it explode. So we'll call it a success. Uh, 
if you ever do this to a person, uh, just don't. Please don't. You don't understand the mess involved, and the death. It's not quick. It's it's a slow death. Oh gosh! Wow. <laughs> um. Hmm. Good for Ooh. you. You're taking a break for at least a couple days. <laughs> I was trying uh, to iron. <laughs> uh, I don't think you noticed it, but you, uh, your skin went um, fully uh, during that process. And oh. not only do I have to transition you back for safety purposes, uh, but you're, to me, you're looking a little thin. I need food. Yes, you do. Uh, you actually lost five pounds of muscle. And fat Ooh. off your person, because that's how much energy it was required to make the shift before you successfully just latched onto the nearest energy source, which was a Leah canister, and went. I'm sorry, Leah canister, <laughs> but it's either you or me. <laughs> it's definitely gonna be you. Uh, and I stand up and, and like after I'm. Reskinned. Thank my master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to off. go do what the ascended do when we pretend to sleep, and it's meditate. Also recover. Sit next to it. Hmm. Probably the, the probably the base core. Yeah. Mm, the base has a core. Oh, it's got a lot of energy sources. It's got a geothermal uh, reactor. It's got a, a fusion reactor. It's got several of those. Um, Have you been past Sector 12? Or that locked off sector? Mm -hmm. What's down there? Uh, it's not a conversation that you just happen out in the hallway. Mm, you're right. That's why we're doing it in my private chamber. Um, fair. Now, as your master, I'd love to answer your questions. Because you are an intellectual and somebody who actively seeks knowledge. What are the curses of being a scholar and a, a seeker of information is when somebody says something exciting, those people end up uh, fixating on an idea that they get in their head, and it's not healthy, as in... Uh, lethal. So if I talk about what could be, what I remember is down there. Well, it's just going to increase the chance of you trying to go down there. So no. give me if I don't. And that is fair. And I feel like I've been off more than I can chew today as it is. Mm-hmm. Literally. You lost weight. You literally lost weight. I know. Yeah. Yikes. But, regardless, good job. Uh, stay out of Sector 12. And, uh, yeah. Good job. We'll see each other later this week. Or sooner or later. And we'll and continue goes. Train. Yeah. I'm kind of just starts walking off towards the food. Ah, oh, forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, every single day you're able to put more and more food away. It's rather impressive. So what now? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, he was just going to wait for Jackie to come meet him. And help okay. uh, disassemble the mech. And start re- uh, putting it you together. You all eat a wonderful pile of food. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we'll actually get back to Liam, because I cut ah. him a little short because of his that's RP. That's cool. No, that's cool. You had to move on to other people. Yep. Uh, cool. You've just finished dinner. Yes, food, dinner, consumption of the meat. Meat. Delicious. Meat. Um. So, the actual... So now I've got the armor arranged for that to get properly repaired. That'll take... I assume it's not going to be he's working on it for a week straight, but rather there's going to be time to like get the plates together and stuff and all that jazz, yeah? Um, it is a focus job, uh, but each of the pieces... Well, the reason I asked is more if I can or cannot work on more mundane parts of the, the mix, well, the mech while it's being worked on. I'm trying. I just want to see if I can get like the um, cockpit in now, or if I'm going to have to wait until he's done. Uh, that's a good question. Hmm. I I don't know how it works for because I know once the armor plates are in place, they can be removed to like install equipment and the like pretty easily. But I don't know what the repair process is like for getting the. Uh, I don't know what the repair process is like. If it's like growing new crystalline armor, if he's just putting new plates on, I don't know what he's up there with it. So, for the Sarabat armor, uh, he's actually pulling from his personal store to fill in the spots where the armor was destroyed, and is unrecoverable. Okay, so at that point, it's just a question if I can replace the... Because once I have the cockpit in place, it's actually functional again. Because I don't recall there being any other damage to it, and there's no other damage listed. Because it was a pretty clean kill. Yeah, it was a very clean kill. Uh, damage to the cockpit's pretty bad, but you can fix that up. I'm just replacing the cockpit altogether with another uh, cockpit. You actually, wait, will the analog cockpit from the shield bearer work, or will I need yeah, to go get an that's, that's no problem. Okay. Actually, you know what? I will go see the quartermaster to see what it would cost to get a virtual cockpit. And what manner? Well, that was the name of what we had in the re the what was the Regans Rogans Reginald. I'm sure. looking to see if I can get a cockpit like that one, because that was called a oh the virtual the virtual yeah. assisted AI, the virtual yeah the virtual one. Um. Hmm. Like I'll just straight up go to the quartermaster and see what it takes to get one. If they're even available. Uh, the yes, they are. Um, are you wanting the... Oh, I don't need the AI. Right, well, it comes with an AI. Uh, are you wanting the current available market one, or do you want something closer to what Cody built? Because he actually built a uh, little bit better of a AI put into the cockpits. I'm not worried about the AI. It's going to get supplanted with Milo. Right. Um, I know it perfectly well. It'll cost you 50 rec. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's cheap. 50, 5, 0, nope. No extra zeros, just 5, 0. Yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah. And uh, it'll be rolled off to where you have the... Uh, well, where you tell it to get rolled off to? Yeah, I've got the I've got the bay. Nice. So the only thing, other thing I got to do is look into installing that laser. 
Sure. Um, exactly same shape design as the. Yeah, it's already got like light lasers, so I'm just gonna replace one of the reds with it. Yeah, just replace it. Let me double check, but I think that's all I got to do with that. Indeed. Still a long way to go. Gotta like, get to, yeah, you know. yeah. And then I like I will talk to. I'm definitely gonna end up talking to Cody about getting upgrades installed. I just, I just know that the um, that uh, their uh, that Cody's mech is kind of um, a mess at the moment. Beautiful, perfect. The, How dare you? Uh, the LRM bays are broken. Uh, I just didn't want to bother Cody with what is essentially very basic upgrades when he's got other things on his plate and I can get them done. And then when I actually, after more complex upgrades, that's when I'm going to talk to Cody about them. Sure. Yeah, that's what that's he's there for. And otherwise, I mean... I guess I'm going to. I'm basically going to be spending the the rest of my time working on that. I'd assume. Sure. Like unless there, unless it takes a lot less time to get a cockpit installed than I'm imagining right now. It is not. It takes a significant amount of time. Yeah. So then, yeah, no. That's what she's going to be up to for a bit. That's what she said. Giggity. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I'm good. All right. Uh, looks like everyone's in bed. I think maybe. Uh, like the last for... Nix, who didn't do any of his downtime shit. Nix, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, it's no stress. Oh, at least you spoke up for yourself. Good. Uh, um. But uh, with the downtime actions possible, right? Um, staying up a bit later gives an extra four, correct? Um, depends on how much later. An hour will give you one. Okay. Because that being the case, he's... Ah, uh, that's... Thing to suck. Uh, where is, is that notepad? Sorry. Um, that's the extra one I get. Yeah, Nix is going to stay up for an extra hour so he gets two additional downtimes. Well, two hours, because he'll need four more. Okay. But with those, with those total, he'd have 15, 16 because of uh, World Soul, which sure. he's going... Which is going to throw ten into upgrading a point of world soul. And uh the other six he's throwing into the first upgrade of through fire and flames. Well, second upgrade. Second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've got to ask, what would that do for my Through Fire and Flames?
えー、I'll think on it. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to upgrade that and or increase the amount. Um, But with that, I could spend an hour meditating for the equivalent of three hours sleep. You could, yes. And then rest the rest of the night to get a full night's sleep. <laughs> yes, yes, you could. And that is the plan. Ah, uh, fancy. What are you working on with your extra, extra downtime actions? Uh, what do you mean extra downtime actions? I use them all. Because it takes five downtime actions plus another five for each level in the same potential tree, which means it took me ten to get World Soul up to tier two. And then with the extra time staying up, gave me just enough to uh, finish off the Through Fire and Flames charge. Which is why it took a total of 10 instead of 5, because it's a second upgrade for it. You know? Or am I mistaken on something? No, I think you're good. I think it's more of just, uh, how about we finish off with this and then call her a night, eh? You know, I would actually appreciate that. I'm dying over here. Okay. Yeah, I kind uh, of agree. This work week was... A okay, bitch. well, actually, let's stop it here. This is a good part. Um, and uh, we'll continue next time. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your diligence. Uh, we got to do a little mech piloting. We got some exciting rolls out. And mm -hmm. uh, promise, training's not going to last too much longer. But uh, then you actually get to see some uh, fight arenas where uh, things get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Shot. yeah. Any uh, merit for the session, Matt? I'm going to give you all 10. Ten merit. Ten oh, up. you and your ones. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm not even sure which one of us you were referring to with that All one. All of you. Stop it. I didn't get a roll of one. You will. You're just holding on to it for a rainy day when you start holding... doing a shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're holding on to it for a particularly div devastating moment. The break my heart moment. <laughs> he's I gonna think that he, I know what you're doing. He, he's you're gonna playing think the good guy, and then you're like, oh. oh, oh, oh. He's gonna think that he's he's gonna kill your character, and it's just gonna be that yes, and then you roll a one, and it's that no. And no, don't, right. you, don't you remember? It's going to be one of y'all rolls a ninety nine, and I'm going to be no. <laughs> you know, we actually have done the roll of uh, roll a hundred, use a fate point, get a one. Johnny's had a character in his campaign that did that just that. Uh, yeah. But thanks, guys. <laughs> Ten merit. I'll see you guys next time. Yep. Thank hey. you so much for playing. Yeah, I'm gonna go pass you, out. Matt. Good night, guys. Same. Peace. All right, Matt. Uh, yeah. Got a question for you. Um, I built, um, you know, the magnet ability. Um, sure. what, what happens if I don't use the once per session thing? Mm, nothing happens. Okay. It doesn't hold over. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think so. I was just thinking since I never got to use it, the session's just too bad, but it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you know what? We can talk about having it because you did. Roll a one. Uh, hit me up tomorrow, and we can talk, chat about it. Sounds good, Matt. Yeah. All right. Peace. Yeah. yeah goodbye.